On this episode of the Truck Show Podcast, Lightning and Holman bring to you the new owner of RK Sport that makes them seriously badass custom hoods. Well, beyond the hoods, don't we want to talk about his entrepreneurial story? Because he went from the guy working for the business to the guy owning the business. And uh, that is no small feat in leaping. We're also going to talk about some truck events that are coming up in 2024. We've got lots of five-star hotline calls. Thank you for dialing into 657-205-6105, the five-star hotline. And Holman apparently has a brand new Nissan Frontier in his driveway. What's up with that? Wait, apparently or does? <laughs> I walked right past it to get mm. into the pod shed. Mm. A beautiful boulder gray pearl brand new Frontier. What's up with you? Uh, Pro 4X. Nissan brought it to me with a bow on the dash. No, they didn't. They sure did. And some holiday cheer in the back seat. Damn it, damn it, damn awesome. it. awesome. Seriously, and, uh, where's my why, man Lightning's truck? Why are you banging on the because table? Because I'm not no. thrilled. Stop. I'm happy you for you. You tell every I'm guest who with... comes in here to stop banging on the table, and then you go and do the same I thing. I did it three times. And that That's was it three times enough. in the last six years. That's enough. Uh, Nissan Frontier. So, yeah, it's a uh, 2023 Pro 4X crew cab, and, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Marin and I, my oldest, took it out to uh, down to my uncle's ranch uh, this past weekend. Wait a minute. You've had this for almost a week, and I just found out about it now? Yeah, I have been pretty busy, so I didn't have a chance to like post about it or anything, but I will. And, dude, I, I haven't driven a Frontier in a while, and I've driven a lot of different stuff lately. I drove the new Tacoma. I drove the GMC and Chevy uh, Canyon Colorado Twins. I've been in a lot of trucks. And the thing I love about the uh, Frontier is you just get in and just start it up, and there's not like... It has a big, nice, giant nine-inch screen, right? Like, in my car play works and all that. But, like, all the controls are where you want. There's nothing you have to figure out. It's not like the GMs where there's no headlight switch anymore. Are you calling it elegantly simple? I'm just calling it, like, a, a, a good truck. Okay, so my wife, who we've discussed ad nauseum on the show as being a, a car snob, mm-hmm. she's like, want to go in the Frontier? So her and I went out to lunch the other day, and she goes, wait, 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 wait. She asked to go in the Frontier? Yes, which I was sort of surprised. That's weird. And we go to lunch, she goes... Huh. I forgot what it was like to be in a small truck. And I'm like, she said, huh? what does that mean? And then yeah, she goes, what does that mean? Well, this ride is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's quiet. I kind of like this. How how much is this? And, you know, it's like 45 grand or something. She's like touching all the plastics and stuff and like fiddling with the, the, the radio uh-huh. and, and doing all the things that wives do. And, and she literally said the weirdest phrase to me that I've ever heard come out of her mouth. Huh. I wouldn't mind a truck like this. What? <laughs> Wait, hold, uh, stop. I'm like, stop. who are you? I don't even know you. When did you start dating someone new? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Uh, so anyway, apparently she liked it enough, and she's like, yeah, I can see myself driving one of these every day, which is probably the highest compliment Nissan will have from any human ever. So um, it passed the are, wife test. Are you going to let her borrow it? No. And so I'm not going to let you borrow it either. <laughs> oh, no. What? Why? And, and then, uh, so Marin and I went out to the uh, to the desert, to my uncle's ranch, and uh, I was really impressed. So did 21.6 miles per gallon heading out there and back. I thought that was pretty good. And that's, you know, 78, 80 miles an hour, cruise control, doing our thing, and uh, zero gravity seats are super comfortable. I know we talk about it all the time. Well, well, you, you and her, well, she's a musician, so no. d- does she have any feedback on the Fender audio system? She was listening to her uh, AirPods and not talking to me. I was literally having a conversation <laughs> with myself, and I look over, and she looks over at me, and she goes, what? She and has go, no idea what you're saying. What did I just say? She goes, oh, I was listening to my music. I'm like, it's so nice to go on road trips with you now. That's what happens when you get a, a teenage daughter. So, Should have shared, my, me and my boys, we share music. Yeah, like I, we, I, we don't we don't listen to the same stuff. So, uh, anyway, enjoyable she trip with her. Wait, she does like ska and then ska. And I make I know I'm on this. I'll make her listen to it on occasion. So anyway, we uh, we listened to uh, some music. I mean, I listened to some music and uh, we enjoyed the quiet ride of the Nissan Frontier. And uh, I was like, you know what, this thing's awesome. It rides nice. It's the door thud is awesome on it. The uh, the V6 is plenty powerful, 310 horse, and uh, how's the nine speed trans? That's great. Yeah, no complaints. Everything it just it was just it's the perfect size. It fits in the driveway, fits in the garage. Everybody seems to like it. Rides nice. Yeah, Abby with her you know car seat in the back does her feet don't touch the back of the uh, the chair in front of her, which is nice, and uh, everybody's happy. So yeah, Nissan Frontier. Uh, I I know this show is presented by Nissan, and we uh, we like to talk up Nissan, but I, I did not bring this up. To, to shill, I brought this up because it's a, there was a really rad brand new truck in your driveway, and you have it, and I don't, and I'm jelly. All right, well, uh, if you are looking to fill your driveway with a Nissan product like I have, then you want to head on over to NissanUSA.com, where you can build and price the Frontier, 
or the Titan or Titan XT. The Titan and Titan XT have the industry's best five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And the Frontier Crew Cab Pro 4X starts at a really palatable 39100 bucks. That's a bargain. That is a bargain. I mean, it's a bargain. It's a great truck for, for the money. And speaking of bargains, you can turn your truck from turd into word for only $295 for Pedal Monster. Did you just say turd to word? <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, word. The Pedal Monster transforms naturally aspirated trucks, turbo diesel trucks, twin turbo gas trucks. It doesn't matter what it is. It has the same effect on all trucks. Pedal Monster can be hooked up in like three minutes. It just intercepts the pedal plug and connects to OBD. It knows your VIN, year, make, model, transmission, speed, gear, all that. It's the only throttle controller that not only transforms your truck and makes it sportier, but also has fail-safe systems so it doesn't leave you stranded on the side of the road like the competitors. If you want to completely make that old bucket fun again, Buy a pedal monster and you'll find yours at bankspower.com. The truck show. We're gonna show you what we know. We're gonna answer what the truck. Cause truck rides with the truck show. We have the lifted, we have the lowered, and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel. The Truck Show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. Holman, so we got a we got ourselves a guest in the house right here in the pod shed. Oh, we do. Last time we had him on the show, I think it was at SEMA in our booth. Yes. So, all right, everybody who comes to the pod shed. What do you think? Uh, I'm speechless. Literally, there's stickers everywhere. We got neon signs. We got a cyber truck inside. Yeah, that was uh, 3D printed by uh, one of our uh, one of our listeners who also 3D printed a uh, a wiener with a crown on it. <laughs> Here it is. Hold on. You want to hold the wiener there with the go. crown? There you go. It's a little odd, isn't it? But uh, but the uh, the cyber truck can uh, can handle it apparently because it sits in the bed of the cyber truck. <laughs> so the cyber truck, the 3D printed cyber truck. Do you think it looks better than the one in real life? Um. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and are you going to do Cybertruck hoods? <laughs> uh, Cybertruck hoods. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll get, get into it. We'll get yeah, into yeah. it. All right. So Caesar Gracida from RK Sport is in the house. We got a quick intro. Don't move. What does it take to be an entrepreneur? What does it take to be an entrepreneur? Quit your job and get a loan. And don't let anyone tell you. So it turns out, Caesar, that you are quite the entrepreneur now. Yeah, yeah. I uh, watched a lot of Gary V videos and clips, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Oh, dude, that looks easy." Yeah, yeah. Sure. We were talking about uh, this uh, before we hit the record button. Uh, I was telling him when anybody asked me, "Should I start my own business?" How I tell them yes verbally, but I shake my head no while I look them straight in their in their eyes and <laughs> ruin their dreams. And it's like, uh, yeah, totally do it because it's going to be awesome, and it is. Uh, Nobody tells you how hard it is. Yes, they do. Or how often the government wants to do no, things No, no, no. They you. tell you all those things, and then you ignore them because you mm. think, well, you did it, so I can do it. And then you mm. try it, and you go, I guess this was as hard as you tried to convey, no, and I ignored I, you. I feel like it's parenthood. It's like uh, when you have a kid, and everybody gives you unsolicited advice, nope. but you just got to take it on your own. Mm -hmm. And then you get there, and you're like, holy crap. This is... This, this is how this is. Like, all of my friends are fathers, and not one of you a-holes told me what to expect, you know, or that I listened. So anyway, it's uh, it sucks. So last time we talked to you, you were an employee? Yes. And now you're the owner? Yes. So like, that's a pretty big leap Dude, from- shake my hand. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Welcome you. to being poor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. And stressed all the time. And worried all the time, and yeah. You know, my 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 new uh, favorite meme is: You ever uh, had one of those days where you drink a Red Bull to relax? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's solid. Hold on. Yes, yes, I have. I get the bell. Yeah, I get the bell. Okay, so give us the backstory. When we spoke to you again, as Holman said, you were an employee of RK Sport. Yes, you had been there for a few years at least. Yeah, um, uh, nine years. Okay, okay, and then take us through the trans. We won't. We don't have to spend a ton of time on the business because we'll get to the products, obviously, and what you're really passionate about, but. How did you take over the business? So, uh, you know, we're taking it back to pandemic. 
you know, March 20th, uh, California announced that they are shutting yep. down. 2021? 2020. 2020. 3 2020. Yeah. March Some, a date that I will not ever remember because it didn't affect me. It was super weird. That's not true because <laughs> you and I were at the Four Wheeler Adventure Expo at the OC Fairgrounds on March uh, 17th or 18th, whatever uh-huh. that weekend was. And it was right before they shut down California, and we were scrambling to get, uh, when I was at Motor Trend, to get um, uh, alcohol dispensers or hand wipes and all that. And it was a big deal because they're like, do we cancel this event or not? And that weekend was the last event right before the whole state shut down. So so I guess I was – you're right. I do recall that. I had blocked that out. But, like, for me, we have a defense part of our business, and – the CFO wrote us all notes and said, you, even though I'm in the aftermarket part side, they said, hey, we, we have a defense side, so that's going to keep us open through with this. And they wrote us all notes. Like, if you get pulled over, anything happens, anyone questions you, you're going to work for the defense contractor portion of the business. And we didn't miss a single day through that, throughout the entire pandemic. So friends, family, everyone I know in Hollywood, radio, TV, record industry, everyone was at home. And here's me at work. Now, granted, I love driving on the highway because it was, I was doing 90 miles an hour. It was me and three <laughs> other dudes, you know, and it was, it was interesting and weird, but everyone has all these pandemic stories. I don't have any, I just can't, I just went to work. So what happened to you? Uh, very similar um, where we were, we were shut down for almost two months trying to figure out how did we get back up and going again? Um, and, you know, we were looking into those exemptions. And so as an OEM, uh, replacement. That's what gave us the okay oh. and, and the ability to continue to reproduce our our product for you know collision vehicles. Don't have any government contracts, but we had uh, customers and clients that do some work for for law enforcement, and so that's what allowed us to continue to work. And we did have you know generate the letters. You had for to the figure employees. out the right paper to file or whatever oh, to man. give you that exemption. Yeah. Okay. And so and that was eight weeks after, and so mm. we we got up and going. Um, at that time, um, and, you know, Mike, uh, the the previous owner was like, you know, he pulled me to the side and it's like, hey, you know, the building that we were in, RK Sport moved from Oceanside to Marietta. And that's both in California. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, we get confused with uh, by Marietta, Georgia. Oh, yeah. This is yeah, yeah. Mur, <laughs> M-U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marietta, uh, California. Uh, city of Marietta wooed us, um, gave us, uh, you know, just an amazing offer to move to their city to a bigger facility. We were just taking over all the uh, small suites in in, in uh, Oceanside next to the Oceanside Airport, um, and so we needed more space, and so Marietta provided that solution. Um, fast forward to 2001, 2002, they needed to build that French Valley um, Parkway uh, off ramp. And so they bought the the building from RK Sport. So it's like an eminent domain thing. Yes. And you're like, oh, that's market price, dude. We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna negotiate. I know what Cut this is worth. Cut the check. Cut yeah. the check. You're like you're like, don't lowball me. I know what I'm worth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like every Craigslist exactly. post or offer up post ever. That's exactly what happened. And so we were there, um, you know, living the hood life, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, you gotta have a, you gotta have a shirt, by the way, that says "Live in the Hood Life," right? I, you have a, <laughs> yes, I do have a few designs of of you know different okay. hoods that that we want to highlight. But you know, that's everybody says "Living the Dream." I'm I'm living the hood life, <laughs> right? You know. Um, so the city was was uh, post listed the building for sale. You know, we knew our time was was uh, was was coming up, and um, you know, without really knowing or hearing about the pandemic. You know, we just kind of carried on actively looking for, uh, you know, our next our next home. Pandemic hit, then that's when everybody's freaking out. Is there work? Will we be allowed to continue to work? Yeah. What's it looking like for our new building, our new home? You know, and started toying with the idea of out of state. Um, you know, there was a lot of pros, a lot of, a, a lot of great things about, you know, doing business outside of California. However, the grass isn't always greener. And I have told several of my friends who have mm-hmm. gone and come back, and then they lose their real estate position, and they're like, this sucks coming back. Like, if you want to leave, you really got to understand you're, you're probably not coming back. But I've had friends move to Arizona, Texas, other places in the country 
where they're like, oh, well, I was told this is a great place to move and the traffic's just as bad. It's like being in LA. Or, <laughs> yeah. or we came to this place and there's no property tax protection. So I don't pay income tax, but my property tax doubled because all the other Californians followed me here and raised all the property taxes or whatever the case. And it's like, I moved and I didn't realize, I, I knew it was cold. I didn't realize there were uh, freezing rainstorms and people were sliding off the highway. And I'm like, at 75 at home by the beach. It's pretty nice. So, yes. Uh, you are right, a hundred percent. We moved out there. Where uh, was this again? Where'd you go? Austin, uh, in this uh, city called Round Rock. Honorary Texan speaking here. I love Austin. Great town. Uh, all the Californians have definitely turned to purple. Um, but back in the day, some great truck shows out there that were amazing, and it's uh, just a it's just a rad place to to hang out and visit. Um, one of my favorite places in in, uh, in all of Texas. I will say I feel like everybody is blaming Californians, yep. but who accepted the big cash? Well, that's the thing. Austin was one of those places where the state of Texas and I think the city said, we want big tech. So we're going to do the tax benefits. We want California businesses. And mm-hmm. so they attracted big tech and a lot of California businesses and said, move here and we're going to give you the tax write-offs and we're going to make it cheap for you and we're business friendly. And they brought all those people with them when they moved. Got and- a, They got a lot of blue with that. Well, yeah. And again, it's... I mean, Austin became just as expensive as California. Absolutely. It's almost like the Bay Area. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's crazy. Yes. And, and it used to be a college, like, it was a college town 20 years ago, right? Like, oh, it, definitely. It was a rad college Did you ever go town. to South by Southwest? Like the, one yeah. of the biggest music festivals there? I went for like four or five years uh, in, the, yeah. in the 90s. It was, it was God's gift. It was incredible to see yeah. young, new, I saw Blink-182 during, when they launched like Cheshire Cat. Oh, yeah. Like the, one of the original, like I've saw so many just, amazing bands. It was just South a by great like, like artist town and college town. And Dude, Counting Crows I saw there before they mm-hmm. got signed. Wow. So like that was, anyway, flash forward, it, it's so, South by is still there. It's but sort it's, of like oh, yeah. California of the South now. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you will always have an amazing time in Austin. Yeah. You will always have fun. There's nothing, there's, you know, endless activities that you can do. However, in the summer and in the winter, you're, you'll enjoy maybe five seconds of that because <laughs> it is so hot. It is so humid. Yeah. If I'm going for hot and humid, I'm hitting the coast. I'm hitting yeah. the tropics, the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. I'm you're, not you're going to be in Key West or something like desert. that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to be in the middle of yeah. the, nowhere. The, the hills, sweating it out. Oh, yeah. And in the winter... Everybody's like, "Oh, welcome to Texas. Welcome yeah. to Texas. That's Texas for you." I'm like, "You can't. You guys are asking us to use less power and less, uh, yeah, less power during the heat and during yeah. the winter. How independent are you?" Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere there's like a, uh, a Texas uh, truck guy who's hitting a steering wheel. Damn it, Caesar! <laughs> yeah. Well, and then uh, you know, Southern California, it's all about Mexican food out here. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Tex Mex is not Mexican food. It wait, wait, what? No, no, really? No, no, no. It does not exist. I went out there and I was like, I want a California burrito. And by the way, everything, when you go outside of California that has California in the name of the menu item is guacamole mm-hmm. or avocado. Everything. So you're in Austin and you're making hoods, right? Because yep. you're the hood guy, living the hood life. Yes, sir. And they're telling you to uh, reduce the amount of, le- uh, of electricity, but you got a lot of power tools. You got a lot of equipment. You got ovens and everything else you need to make hoods right yes so, well we have our, our huge uh you know we have a paint booth we have a deburring booth you know that's where we do our finishing sanding you know and just sending all the all the dust up in the air um and on top of that it you know we were starting over zero employees so training everybody from the ground up oh yeah and so they, they all stayed in cali all stayed in Cali. Ex- well, with the I take it back, with the exception of myself and two other employees uh, moved out there, and each in separate departments. One was our carbon fiber technician, okay. and one was our uh, shipping and handling. You know, he just he's unstoppable. He can box <laughs> up hoods, spoilers, body kits like no. And other you're person. still an employee, by the way, at this point, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm uh, doing the hiring process, the interviews. At the same time, trying to figure out, you know, how to, you know, start a new network out, out in Did you in at Austin. least find the in and out Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and the best part is uh-huh. there was no line. That, see, but that's the thing. Because there's a Whataburger, which sucks. What a yeah. bummer, dude. I what mean, a bummer. Oh! oh! Yeah. I mean, listen, I love Texas. A couple of Texas burger. just gave the middle finger to I the, uh, the California pompousness. But I, I, like, I, like I told our friend in Texas, I'm like, 
Dude, you can trash in and out all you want. You could be like, screw you guys, I'm Whataburger. Who's got the I'm, line I'm, around who's the Who's got the line around the building? Who's going to wait eight hours for Whataburger? Nobody. Idaho just did. Idaho just had an in and out grand it opening. It was eight hour, yeah, eight, eight hour hours. wait. Yeah. Wow. Saw it on their Instagram. All I was day. like, yeah. All day. Totally. All day. Um, I, I, and I'm sorry. That's We're proudly a little bit California pompous about in and out Well, I, I was like, well, I guess everything <laughs> is big in Texas, including the disappointment. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I was on a journey going from taco truck to taco truck to taco truck looking for, you know. Real Mexican food. Real Mexican food. When I was in Austin, you know, I'd call my mom, call my grandma. They, you know, they're calling me every day. How are you, Mimo? How are you? And Have you eaten? Have you eaten? And I'm like, yes. Just because you physically don't see me eat, yes, I am eating. I have lost a lot of weight because it's hard to find because the, out here. you're like. The closest thing to Mexican food here is Taco Bell, <laughs> yeah. right? That's, well, seriously, that's not close. And you know, and you're like, well, you know, it's bad when you're craving a chalupa. You know, oh, and, and, <laughs> where's the chimichanga at Taco Bell? <laughs> and it is true, you don't know what you have until it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. So you know, we love islands. It, that's oh Southern yeah, California oh, I love thing. islands. Islands yeah. is great. You know, do they do, wait? Do they not have islands in other states? No, it's really? Southern California. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. That's how I feel about Waffle House. Once the uh, Waffle House delineation at the Colorado River ends, it's like, oh, no, <laughs> you know, exactly. I have to hit on my way out. I don't care less about Waffle House, <laughs> cardboard eggs, and I don't get the hype. No, I don't there's, get the hype. there's nothing. It's yeah. it's the fact that it's so amazing. Lame. It comes full circle. No, it's yeah. amazing. Waffle it's House is not the best. amazing. Are you are you going to choose Waffle House or uh, IHOP? IHOP every Waffle single House, time. 100%. IHOP, IHOP, IHOP yeah. every yeah. single oh, time. House. Waffle House. Because oh. I, I think Roscoe's is overrated. It well, is no, totally here, but overrated. But here's why Roscoe's is overrated. Because they don't cook their freaking waffles long enough. You have to ask them for your waffles well done so they come out crispy and not mm. doughy. Well, that's changes everything. Okay, so changes Roscoe's everything. is total SoCal. That's a that's a. You'll catch me at pantries in downtown LA. I was I was uh, at the uh, pantry at the LA Auto Show. Walked up there for breakfast one day. Still cash only. It's wor- yeah, no, they accept cards now. Oh, they, they accept do? cards yeah. now. They used to have the ATM machine with like the eight dollar charge that they send you <laughs> to in the isn't corner. Is pantry one of the oldest for, uh, restaurants yeah. in Los Angeles? Yep. hundred years next year. Yep. Wow. Yep. And it isn't it super spendy now? And the former LA mayor owns it i believe okay oh, okay yeah yeah it's a great spot um it's it, it they, they changed their hours they used to be 24, 24 hours and, and yeah. now it's uh 7 a.m to 3 p.m here's yeah. how you guys know pantry schedule. so you don't know where pantry is but if you've ever read a skateboard magazine and you've seen a guy like go down a 45 degree strange looking blue brick walls is still brick it's um yeah there's a wall to the to the south side of the pantry restaurant that's famous for skateboarders launching off of and it's been in hundreds of magazine covers. Yeah. That's the pantry. Yep. Anyway, going back to you in Austin. And so where does it where does it go south? Where does how do you how do you grab the business? You know, much like everybody in the US, we're struggling. We're struggling to find employees. You know, trying on Craigslist, LinkedIn. Uh, honestly, especially for for composites, everybody is applying as a mechanical engineer, just oh, overqualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we're looking for trade, yeah, hands you know, on trade work, hands they, on. They want to go work for Toyota yes. or something like that, right? An OE and apply the mechanical engineer at an everything o- on yeah. a computer. Yep, yep. This is me- you know hand labor. This yeah. is, you're gonna be dusty at the end crushing. of the day. Oh, yeah. dusty and itchy. <laughs> yeah, and itchy. Yeah, that fiberglass is no joke. You're not wearing suits. Now, nah. well, we do have you know the the uh, the, the, the coveralls, and, you know, okay. But uh, still, I mean, you take them off and it goes. Poof. Well, that, that and it's layered, so you're sweating and it, 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 it's it's. You make it sound worse. attractive. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a job that sucks, no, 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 sport. no, no. I was gonna say, if you're looking for a job, um, they need a marketing person who can add spin to his <laughs> stories. Yeah, yeah, that's not your forte, <laughs> Mr. <Sam. laughs> no. I mean, surprisingly, it, it's you know, it really is a hard job to explain. You're 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 handcrafting the raw product, and when it's finished, it's still unfinished. If that makes sense, yeah. It's not until you actually go to the SEMA show, to yeah. LA Auto Show, or anywhere where we have a, where a our body product. man has fitted it and painted it, and I mean, it's just like hanging fiberglass fenders off a pre runner. Like mm-hmm. there is a lot of hours that go to hang it just right, so all the body panels and the gaps are right, and there, there's an art to it. And it's beautiful when it's done. Oh, yeah. And it's no different than the assembly plant. Sure. There is still someone, you know. Not a lightning struck. (laughs) Why do you say that? Because you told me that your hood gaps are crazy? Uh, They are crazy. I'll show you afterwards. You're like, this came (laughs) off the line? Ram like this? Yeah. No, I'm sure he knows. (laughs) Oh, we we know. And, and, you know, that's 
Well, let's nine, get nine, nine out of ten times. Let's get into that. Hold on, we got to we got to get to the to where you take over the business. I'm dying to know how this happens because you're still an employee. Yep, and you're getting all well. You're not getting dirty and itchy in the back, but oh, I'm I'm, I'm getting itchy. There's well, only three you know, of them. He's, yeah, of course he's got to get itchy. So as as we're we're hiring employees and training them, everybody that was training us in Marietta, you know, back in California, they're in California. So, you know, it's it's just myself and two other employees. One who was a carbon fiber technician was was training everybody, including myself, because my job as uh, director of sales and marketing was to film the process and, you get, know, get out to the world. Online. Yeah. I never really asked the questions of like, what is this? What why are you mixing these two or what? You know, how much paint are you adding? Those questions did not come until after the the purchase. And so even beforehand, as as an employee still, you know, I was, you know, working on processing all the orders that were coming in, keeping up to date with vendors. All, all the day to day. All the day to day operations. So in my head, I'm just living day by day. When 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 we got there, um Mike had given himself six months basically to make this deal happen with Champion. It didn't work out. And that um, you're talking about Champion, who owns Xenon, Xenon and, 3D Carbon, right. um, which it would seem like it's a natural fit, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we 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 did some private label manufacturing for yeah. Celine, and, and Xenon is is that's the same company that does the body kits since like the '90s, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like every Honda Civic and Accord and all those cars had Xenon body kits. Like if you if you go back and watch the original couple, fa- two, two, three, four, Fast and Furious, those oh, are yeah. all Xenon body kits, right? They or were a lot there of with them. Uh, Wings West. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, and so very, you know, n- notable names uh, uh, from the 90s. Fast forward to May. It's like time's up. Um, before we left California, you know, Mike had asked me, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts about Texas? I'm like, well, that's a big move. Yes, it is a big move. That's a big move. However, I don't feel like looking for a new job right now. <laughs> um, not only that, but I love what I do. It's a little bit of an adventure too, right? I mean, uh, that oh, had yeah. to be part of it is you're like, I have an opportunity to move to a new place, experience a different part of the country. That's got to yep. be, I mean, I think there would be, I don't think I would do that on my own, mm-hmm. but I think if the opportunity was right, I'd be like, all right, I'll do, I'll take a flyer on it. I want to go see how other people live and experience a, a new part of the world and all that. And I could imagine there's a little bit of excitement behind that. Yes. So when we were up and running again, after, after we, we got exempt, um, we made a trip to Austin with with uh, the guys at Champion. So it, it was in August when we went out there. You know, best drove. time of year to go. Oh, it was. <laughs> we went everywhere. We went to you know Oasis. We checked out all the nice houses out there. Looked at the building that was still under construction. I mean, we just you know sold, sold on yeah, the vision, yeah. sold on the city, and they schmoozed you. Obviously, sold on the gas prices. Oh yeah, for sold sure. On the gas for prices. for sure. It, now I will say that we went, you know, went to fine dining, hit all the nice restaurants. I'm like, oh, the food is amazing here. <laughs> so I came back. I'm like, okay, you know, talk to my wife. I'm like, look, this may or may not happen. However, I think we, the company is moving to Texas, and so October 30th, the company moved to Texas, and so for so November, from August to October. That's how fast that was. Yes. And along with uh, um, the purchase of the building that we were in, we basically had like less than two months to move out. Okay. So it was crunch time. Yeah. It happened super fast. It happened very fast. Your wife divorces you. Now you're single. So now you got all this. But he has a oh, new wait, wife from Texas and <laughs> she wears cowboy boots and a Daisy Dukes and a hat. Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so our in uh, we had lived in Temecula for two years and our lease was up in April. So, it, you know, we had... It, it, the timing was was great, you yeah. know, because we can not sign the lease. However, she stayed behind while I focused on getting uh, the business up and running. It was tough. It was tough being by myself. What did her uh, What did her boyfriend think about it? <laughs> <laughs> she she was constantly <laughs> calling me, texting me, like, "Hey, you know, just paranoid." It, it, yeah. It, it, like. You know, she's by herself. Yeah, and she don't have kids. She's like, so. you don't listen to country music now, do you? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I started developing a twang, <laughs> um, and so it, it was very rough to, you know. Granted, it was very cheap to travel. I mean, fifty dollar round trip from Austin to LA yeah. or San Diego, I can make that happen. Yeah. You know, twice a month, but it still sucked. Yeah, you're still doing the airport, and you're still getting an airplane, and 
And you know anybody that picks up anybody in at LAX is. Oh, you, I don't. We've talked about. I don't do LAX. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's the worst. Bad. It's I bad. I don't do it. So we did that again. Come May, Mike is like, hey, you know, I know you, we've talked about you taking over. You've expressed interest. Here's what I'm looking for, and basically gave me. So when he handed that paper to you, did you erase one of the zeros and hand it back to him? <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait, I, this well, this is what I can afford, and you just kind of made it and you handed it slid right. I feel like the table. I missed a point where a, a point starts. Champion was going to buy it, so you were going to team up with Xenon, the other body kit company, doing fiberglass, and then all of a sudden that didn't happen, and then it's now you have the opportunity to purchase it. So uh, Champion had a, had a part of the, the reason for the move was Champion was going to step into the composite space. They, they uh, were working out deals with um, different schools and, you know, develop a, a partnership with, you know, tech schools. Oh, yeah. Trade schools. So basically they, there's an avenue for them to have jobs after their trains. Sort Correct. Of yeah, it. it was basically their job and responsibility to hire the lamination crew. That never happened. Oh, and okay. so we had to take it on upon our own hands to hire our own crew because, I mean, we were there for all of November setting up and December nothing was happening still. And so, you know, mid-December, I'm, you know, I'm like, we can't wait any longer. Yeah. I mean, we are we sitting people. on – well, we, and we're sitting on, you know, almost six months of orders that have been coming in. And oh, how do you fulfill that? Yeah. I mean, it, it – I mean, How I much a, of your inventory went from California to Texas? Uh, six semi trucks full. Okay, so, wow. uh, yeah, it was it was a lot. Uh, about I'd say maybe six hundred different molds. Holy mackerel! Wow. Yeah, it a lot of molds that I I shouldn't have gone with us in the first place. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, with every you should have obsoleted a bunch, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you're looking at that. Uh, you know. Fiero with the uh, with the <laughs> hood scoop on it or something because it's mid engine. I don't know something yeah, weird like so that. Yeah, so it was we threw away the Sunfire, the Grand Am, the GTO, the Cavalier. Oh, dude, the Cavalier! Back in the day, you know people were like hood scoop on the Cavalier. <laughs> we yeah, we had the Z twenty eight. Yeah, hood. Um, holy mackerel! Yeah, we. I mean, we developed the supercharger for the Cavalier. I mean. Dang. Damn. When we were in with GM, I mean, yeah. we were in. Indeed, we developed yeah. the market for yeah. so many odd GM vehicles that, like, <laughs> Mag- like, we need this to be cool and we need you guys to help us. <laughs> it's like yeah. Magnaflow and Eibach are like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, this is debuting at the SEMA show in GM's booth. <laughs> and it has 14s on it. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the speaker size. <laughs> you, so as you got the car and you're going to you're going to Eibach, the spring company, going, I need springs to lower this car. Dude, they're we're like slamming the cabbie. Like, Are you oh, yeah. serious? We don't want to give you product for that. <laughs> and then you fast forward, and it's yeah. like we're bringing in truckloads of exhaust oh. kits that are going back out. You know, and it 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 was amazing to see that and and to witness that. Well, I was know, looking at the, the website just to see thousands. What kind of weird stuff I could find? You still have stuff for the Pontiac Solstice. That is still a hot seller. Is it really? Is it really? Yes. Oh, they yeah. only made like ten thousand of those things or something. Can I yeah, slap but... every one of those owners? Guess who they're calling and and uh, purchasing <laughs> hoods that are no longer available or uh, bumpers that are no longer available. Uh, all right, uh, all right. interesting. So you 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 buy the company. He makes you an offer. You can't refuse. I can't refuse it. I mean, this is a dream come true. So what do you tell your wife? Uh, hey, babe, we're gonna be poor for about five, maybe ten years. At this point, so. Uh, I signed my lease to my new apartment in in Austin May first. I signed the paperwork to purchase the company May third. Oh <laughs> wow! I mean, and and Mike drove back to California May fourth. Wow. I I mean, to this day, I, I it still hasn't hit. Me. I was gonna say, do you look back and go, I don't even know what happened. Like all yeah. of a sudden, I own this company in Texas, and I'm not even from here. Oh, this is uh, I'm Will Farrow in old school. Yeah, like yeah. what happened? I just blacked out <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. because. It, it it still feels like that. You what, know? what was it like the minute like Mike handed you the keys? He's like, good luck. And then he Goodbye. pieces out and he drives away. And now you're sitting here in this freaking warehouse and you don't have all the employees you need. You don't have all the product that you need. You don't have, you know, the production. They, and you're standing there and you're like, oh, yeah. shit. What I do? <laughs> the room got bigger. <laughs> I, I got bet. very, very small, <laughs> and it, you know, it did take a few days for me to, you know, really feel the effect of like, okay, Mike, Mike's gone. Like, <laughs> yeah, he ain't coming back. He's not here. 
And not only that, but now I have to share that news with Champion, who had <sighs> no idea what, what just happened. So it was up to you to break up with Champion because you're like, I'm not going forward with that deal because I'm doing this. Well, it it it, be, it it went sour. Yeah, you know, they were like, "Well, okay, we had a deal," yeah. um, and I'm like, "Well, yeah, deal with I Mike." I'm like, "I don't know what yeah. happened." Yeah, we, we'll hop on a call. Yeah, yeah. you can talk to Mike. Yeah, yeah. You, and I mean, that's when I again, in hindsight, everything came to light. This this was a deal in the works yeah. for almost a year and a half. Did you bootstrap it? Did you have to take on some investors? Did you go to a bank and get a small business loan? Like, cause there's people listening right now who are going to have opportunities and they don't, I, I think the thing is when you start your own business, sometimes the business chooses you, sometimes you don't even choose the business, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that there's people going, I don't know what it looks like when that day comes. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, what, I mean, you don't have to tell us the, the dollar amount or how you did it, but I think just for other people listening on wanting to be entrepreneurs, like how did you navigate that? So the offer was presented to you and you're like, whoa, What's the next step? Do you call the bank and go, can I even get a loan for this? Yeah. Or do you call your wife and say, hey, your rich great grandfather, like how old is he right now? You know, like how, how what, what's step the next step? Two, I happen to know the answer. So first he robbed a bank and then judging by his physique, he was a male prostitute. <laughs> I don't think any of those things are know. true. Am I not accurate? Why, are, are you undressing our guests in your mind? That's weird. Mike had given me, you know, what he would do. Yeah. If, if he was starting over again. Okay. And so I followed those steps. Okay. However, when you talk to the bank, they're like, <laughs> we need at least two years of tax returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this and that. I'm like, well, I'm on day one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you have you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> yeah. And so at that point, it, it was just, you know, I, I had working capital, you know. Okay. Uh, Mike Mike did leave money in the, in the, in the company. In the business. To at least run for a few pay periods. It goes, but the rest it, is on it, you. And it goes fast. It goes fast. Yeah. And, you know, thankfully, uh, you know, I inherited two accountants that worked for the company remotely. And so I spoke with them almost every day. <laughs> okay. When this is due, what yeah. do I do? Yeah, yeah. Who do I write the check to? And, and it was just learning everything. It was a crash course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's still a crash course yeah. because- How long know, has it been now? Three years. Okay. Mm. So it'll be three years in, in June. So fast forward. So I'm by like, the time you are listening to this podcast, I'm I'm at year one. Okay. So I'm two years trailing you. So I'm looking at you, and you look successful. You have logos. <laughs> you're smiling still. He's laughing. So I'm hoping I can. That's I'm looking at me two years in the future, going, okay, all right, we we survived the the rough part, and yeah. we're and and now we're making a go of this thing. Yes. In while you know my my, my two and a half years in Austin. My father-in-law was my lifeline. Um, he worked for RK Sport for 20 years, um, had creative differences, uh, left uh, two years after I joined the company. And so I was heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, we talk shop. We sure, like he's a mentor cars. to you. Yes. You and... took his daughter from him. I mean, dude. <laughs> and now, and, and, and so he leaves in. Could you imagine you working with a dude, right? And you're like, you become close with him. And then you're like, I'm gonna date his daughter and ruin this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did him dirty. In yeah, first, you yeah. did do him dirty. <laughs> it, well, it 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 uh, it, it got tricky after after he left <laughs> because it did become a conflict. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're both in the same space. Yeah, he was the lead designer. He was the vision of the company. I just presented projects and proposals to them, and I'm like, let's let's yeah. attempt to execute these. But while I was in Austin, I told he was the first person I told. He go because I I you was know, he happy for you? Oh, he's like this changes everything. Yeah. He goes, it, it, we're back. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay, that make you feel good. Re- oh yeah, it, it reintroduced RK Sport back into his yeah, life. Yeah. Um, and now my mission was to get back to Oceanside, get back home. Yeah, uh, as soon as possible. So the semis pulled up to the building a <laughs> couple months later. <laughs> Beep, beep, they backed out. I, with oh, I kept my receipt. You know, it's like ninety day guarantee. You know? <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, okay, how do I do the day to day? In and we moved to Hutto, so Hutto is is about maybe fifteen twenty five minutes east of of Austin. You know, there's so many small towns. Yeah, much like yeah, yeah. you know, L A or Orange County. The problem with L A or Orange County, they all grew together to make one big giant town. That is it, true. In Texas, there's still space between some of them. You know, as you get out in the hill country, which is refreshing, stuff. by the way. Yeah, absolutely. It was my mission to co- to come back to to California. I didn't know how because 
the day to day, the month to month, I mean, the company was living on check to check. Sure. As a brand new business owner with new employees almost every three months, the turnover was bad. And the ones that did stick around, it was like, okay, what's next? You know, how many more times are we going to train yeah. employees? Yeah. You know, be, this is getting boring. This is getting tiring. How am I supposed to keep morale up? Yeah. And at the same time, how am I? Are you going to get to the next level? So you've got some cash level. in the bank. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so it was, you know, trying to do SEMA, trying to do any shows in Texas. Texas is huge. Big. To make a trip out to Dallas, Houston, yep. or any of the shows in those areas, I don't know. It's tough. Mm -hmm. In California, it's doable. It, you know, I mean, going to Johnson Valley, going yeah. to King of the Hammer, sure. going to Big Berry, going to Mammoth. It's still doable. Yeah. And it's realistic. Whereas in Dallas, you're taking a few days off. Dude, it's a long... It's, I, mean, I don't think people realize you could spend two days driving across Texas and not be across the state. Well, all of our suppliers... If we're in Austin. Uh, Composite One is in Austin. It's in uh, in Dallas and Houston. I couldn't, ha I couldn't get any reps to come out and help me if oh, I had wow. any questions or issues. Yeah, like, you're yeah, just too I, far. I don't do Austin. Yeah. It's like we just have trucks that, that, that drive in that through that area. Mm. And not only that, but the amount of resin and chemicals you use yeah. is a drop in the bucket compared to tankers of, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I use yeah, a yeah. drum a week. Yeah, they yeah, use yeah. tankers a week. Yeah, sure. I'm like, You're okay, small fries. They're not, they're, oh, yeah. they're not going to you know devote any time to come visit you. Whereas in, in Southern California, I have, you know, tens of different suppliers yeah, that yeah. I can get product the same day. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that, you know, if we can make it work in Texas, th th there still needs to be a much better infrastructure yeah. for at least my industry or my yeah. market. Yeah. Uh, the ERC tax credit was my saving grace is the company because we stayed open during the pandemic. We got money back yeah. from, you know, the taxes that the company paid for W-2 employees. So basically that's of like, this is it. Yeah. You know, these, these next few checks that are coming from the IRS, that's what I'm going to use to move back to California. And then so October. Did anyone from Texas that you hired follow you to California? I offered it. Yeah. I offered it. I just... And did it, you tell I mean, them there's more in in and out density than there is? In, in uh, there, there, there wasn't enough time in the day to, you know, debate back and forth yeah. of the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. Um, not only that, but it's no different than you know convincing California. Yeah, of course. Well, that's Texas. why I was curious. Yeah, you know, I, it was this. In, yeah. in, it was it was heartbreaking because it was the hardest thing I've had to do. Yeah as a first time business owner yeah. and and they were, they became you know the ones that did stick around not to mention um the the two employees that that moved with the company yeah. i mean he uprooted his family yeah and, yeah and, totally you know and i like guys i'm so sorry we're going he back he ended up staying in texas he he stayed in texas no kidding yeah i mean he, like you said he sold yeah. his house left yeah. california with no intentions of coming hard back hard to get back hard to come back and he, and you know, he he told me he's like, hey, if I, if I do make my way back to California, you know, do do I still have a job with you? I'm like, well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I drug your ass out here. I bring, I'll bring <laughs> yeah. you back. Yeah. And so that that was, you know, that was a very difficult yeah. moment, um, and that I had to get, you know, again talking to my wife. I'm like, she's my rock. She works for the company. She's cu my customer service, my uh, my my sales representative. She, uh, her background is in, in Starbucks for 14 years. Okay. So she knows how to deal with, with picky <laughs> <People>? customers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we know what it is, what it's like working with car enthusiasts, oh, yeah. you know, it, it can yeah. be really good and it can be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Starbucks is no different, except she doesn't have drinks being thrown at her. Right. Yeah. I saw that video <laughs> the other day. <laughs> that, the, the, the RC tax credits, what brought me back to California. I'm like, all right, cool. I brought, and this time only I, I, I did discontinue and do away with so much that I only brought it, brought back uh, the keep the key movers, two semi trucks. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. wow. That's two a reduction. Yeah. So were you able to sell any of the mold or did they just get trash? Was there anybody who's like a, a, you know, a conglomerate company that's like, Hey, we'll take that mold off your. Well, uh, throughout the two years I was getting rid yeah. of a lot of stuff. I'm like, okay. you know, this is just a waste. Yeah. We yeah. just got to make room. And, and all my employees are like, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. I could use that spoiler. Could you, okay, use it. Yeah. I can't find anything that I want it on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why do you think we yeah. haven't sold any of these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment I got rid of them, so I get a call. Yeah, hey, do you have a, the, the Monte Carlo spoiler? <laughs> That's how it works. But it's yeah. only one or two, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you make it back. You find a good spot. I'm going to flash forward a little bit mm -hmm. here. You lease new buildings. You, you get set up. You're running. 
Mm-hmm. You've got now a pared down inventory of just the hot movers. Yep. Right. You're bringing employees. Yes. Today you've got did you a stable workforce? Bring back employees that had previously been with the company. Yes. And then so you are so help from a training standpoint. And then what was like the regulation like? You're using a lot of chemicals. California obviously has really strict standards for that. Was that it's gotten harder, harder and it's gotten worse. Yeah. However, we did change our, our you know our our operation in a, in for instance we we no longer spray our molds with with a with a spray gun. Okay. We don't atomize uh, yeah. the gel coat. Yep. It's done by hand. We have the right to do so without a permit. Okay. Um, and because I I'm using pneumatic tools, there are no sparks, so yeah. I I'm compliant with everything. Um, the only gray area right now is the fumes and the vapors. Sure. Which, speaking with my suppliers, I'm like, you would have to use maybe about four times the amount that you're using to become hazardous. Okay. Because once you once you you uh, you activate the the catalyst and the resin yep. and the gel coat, within hours the smell goes away. Yeah. With proper ventilation, it goes out the door. <laughs> people people walk by like, oh my God, it smells so good. Oh my God, what is, what is that? You know? so, I'm kind of curious just to the nuts and bolts of like your building. How did you find your building? Did you have to do renovations to add ventilation and a paint booth and those types of things? Did you have any of that come back? Like, was it was it an area that you wanted to be in or did you have to sacrifice and move somewhere nearby because there wasn't a great commercial fit? I mean, how did that work? We did have to look for, you know, heavy industrial use, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a complex a building that was zoned for that, okay. um, you know, can't be too close to residential yeah. or schools. schools. Yep. You know, I moved back uh, November of 2022. Um, and so we, we have just moved back. And we've been searching everywhere in Southern California and, you know, in, in, in the North County area yeah, of San Diego. San Diego. Uh, there aren't too many places that are between 5,000 and 10,000 square feet. They're it's all either. really big or really small. Exactly. Yeah. And if you do find something within like the five to 8,000 square yeah. foot, uh, especially at that time, yeah. at, at the end of the year, Everybody was like, well, I want five months, six months rent up front. You know, they just wanted a ridiculous deposit up front. I'm yeah. like, I don't have that. <laughs> yeah. Um, not only that, but, you know, again, they were looking at the business. Oh, you're relocating. Yeah. Why are you relocating? So, you know, yeah. they're, they're asking Are you outrunning your creditors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, you moved a lot in the past few years. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but we've been through a pandemic. We've been through, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. shortages and one of my one of my good friends that I've known for twenty years is he he has an uh, uh, an auto a body shop. He he was getting ready to move from his suite to uh, two doors down to a much bigger facility, and I'm like, he he told me he's like, well, what do you you know what size are you looking for? I'm like, at least five thousand. I was like, mine's thirty eight, but it's there, and so I subleased, and so moving in new city city yeah. of Oceanside. Uh, anytime you, you you have to apply for a business yeah, license, yeah. so that's that's when the fire inspector comes, takes a look at everything. Um, you know, it's a little confusing because when you apply for a business license, they they they, they tell you like, hey, just make sure you have that everything is zoned for it, and make yeah. sure that the permits will work for this yep. before you sign the lease. However, when the fire inspector shows up, that the first time uh, they showed up, they're like. This is empty. I'm like, well, I didn't want to fully set up because I wasn't sure that, yeah. the, you know, the application says don't sign the lease. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I already signed the lease. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? I'm kind of stuck. And they're like, well, we'll come back in, in 30 days. Make sure you're fully set up. So we're fully set up. There's uh, a few um, you know, violations from the previous uh, tenant that they still hadn't fixed. So it was just little, little minor things I'm like we'll come back. They come back. We're up and running. We're laminating. Um, we had a few molds that were painted. I mean, talk about the the timing of everything. Like we were in the thick of like bonding hoods, laminating. And she comes <laughs> yeah. in and then you know the the resin just <laughs> slaps her in the face, and so she goes, "Wow, I can taste it." I'm like, "Well, you're like two feet from me, <laughs> of course." Yeah. You can, and you don't have a respirator. Yeah. You know, yeah. my guys yeah. I, I have the half mass respirator. Yep. They're like, "No, I think you're going to need a ventilation permit." Uh, well, here we go. Here come the government yeah, putting their hands out. And so I go to the city. I talk to them and I'm like, hey, um, fire department, fire inspector sent me over here. What, what type of permit you're looking for? They said a ventilation permit. Okay, well, what do you do? I'm like, we, uh, we, you know, we make fiberglass parts. We hand paint 
and we do everything by hand. We don't use any machinery. I'm like, well, okay, um, you're going to need a tenant improvement plan. Oh, what? Well, okay. Um, and again, all terminology that I have no idea what they're saying. So they're like, here, you can call a draftsman, um, an engineer. Don't call an architect. They'll charge you too much. So they're telling me what to do, who to call. I do all those things. And everybody that talks to me, they're like, are you kidding? You don't need that. Yeah. Like that is a waste. I would fight it. If I were you, I'd fight it. If they don't want to, if they don't want to budge, take it to the news. Just keep escalating. Yeah. I'm like, they hate small business, dude. You're a little guy in a 3,800 <laughs> yeah. square foot commercial building. <laughs> you like, know what? You know what it is though. This. So I've to feed my kids. I, I, we, I've done this before. I've been an entrepreneur a few times, and and most of the people at the cities have not been an entrepreneur. No. They graduated college and they got a job working for a municipality Mm -hmm. and they've received a paycheck steady and benefits their job is to do this to you and they've never had to be on that side of the fence before for the most part i'm sure there's exceptions right but like they can't perceive of what they're asking of you yeah they can't even imagine what it what it means to you to say go get all these permits yep and you're right they're just looking at the code that's on the inspection report oh yeah you need this okay how do i get that well, I don't know. Talk to the inspector. The inspector <laughs> told me to talk to you. Oh, well, then you need to talk to the building official. I've left him <laughs> several emails and messages. They haven't gone back. Oh, he's on vacation. <laughs> well, oh, and they're off every other Friday. Of course. I'm like, okay, well, when do they work? I'd like to know because I, I, I'd like to get this resolved. You know, I'm first time uh, moving into the city, coming back from uh, out of state. So I, I, I have to get this up and running. And so it was just a It's crazy because you're like, I want to give you my money. I want to yeah. give you my tax dollars. Well, not you're, really. Well, <laughs> I know, I know, but you're, you're, they're going to get them whether you want it or Correct. not, right? But you're like, I'm trying to contribute to this community and you refuse to take my money. And the crazy part is the EPA and everybody enforcing all these regulations, nothing really has, no, no, nothing has changed in operating in, in the business yeah. uh, uh, aspect of composites. I mean, I'm in Oceanside. There are a hundred surf companies. Of course, surf, boats, I mean, all sorts Everything. of stuff. Right? Fiberglass, yeah. fiberglass, fiberglass, fiberglass. Yeah. And I'm on, um, I'm down our original location talking to all of these businesses. Yeah. I'm like, like, hey. What did you do? What did you do? Oh, we, we've we been here for 30 years. So we're they, grandfathered in. They don't care about us. They never had to ask yeah. us anything. We, I mean, we've yet yeah. to get a visit from, from fire department or fire marshal. And since we moved in, yeah. yay for me. Yeah, you know, I get to be the guinea pig. Yeah, and see how these new rules get enforced and how we, they they you know stick the course. Yeah, I, right now I I am still in the process of uh, of of working out a an application. I can't even submit a plan myself. It has to be through an approved you know general contractor. That's got, insane. Got to love having uh, you know uh, small business support. Congratulations on the move. Thank you. Um, the successful replanting of the business. Yes. Let's talk about product. Yes. I'm way behind the, the last project that we- Maybe don't tell our audience that because the, they want to buy your product. So let's not tell them it's six months to get a hood. No, no, no. no our lead times have been cut drastically. We're, we're well within two weeks. Oh. Whereas we used to be- two months uh, carbon well, was especially when you're moving <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you're like oh it's gonna take a couple months because we're all of our stuff's on a freight line truck uh, halfway between here and texas right. and i'm looking for a building and i just got shut down because oh, of yeah. my fumes and so let's talk about the hoods that you so i was gonna say i was gonna say real quick on, on hood. so uh chevy silverado you've got everything from 07 all the way up to 23 yes so you're current on that on ram uh you've got uh 09 through current Ram 1500, um, and you got 19 to 18 Ram HD, and you got a lot of stuff going on for Ford. You've got F-150 hoods from 09 to 2020, Super Duty hoods uh, 2011 to 2017 and up, Ranger, uh, Raptor uh, hood 17, 19, Bronco, Ranger 2019 to current. And I'm just going to go over the trucks. Uh, you've got the GMs, similar to the Chevy, so yep. 07 up to... Are you close to current on that one? No. No. Uh, I'm behind on the uh, Chevy, the Silverado the HDs, HDs yeah. and, the, and the GMCs. Yep. So then uh, 07 to 14 on the Sierras, uh, you got Wrangler hoods, uh, so JK and JL. JL. And then don't miss... I mean, it's important. Can't miss the Pontiac Solstice, 06 to 09. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and then any in case of any of you have a solstice, solstice and sky. And sky. If you got a Saturn sky and it's sitting in your garage or you're about to inherit one from your, you know, favorite uncle or something like that, make <laughs> yeah. sure. Uh, and then you got uh, FJ Cruiser, you got Tundra, you got Tacoma, Sequoia, but obviously the Toyota body styles just changed, so I'm sure you're going to be on those things pretty quick. Yes. And so um, we ventured into the wide body in 2017 with the Silverado. A lot of our customers were like, you have to do be- uh, fenders and bedsides. We love your hoods. We need something different. Um, we, you know, we're just, we're, we're looking for something different. Did um, you feel like if you did that, you'd be stepping on some of your, some of your counterparts in Southern California that make? Not at all. You know, I, 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 I'd love and, and, and respect what, uh, what Tim at ADV is doing. Um, uh, you know, Fiberworks, McNeil, um, great companies, great companies because they we're on our own lane, honestly. You know, Tim is crushing it in the Bronco world. I mean, he's first to market and just yeah. took off with it. Um, and that's it. ADV? No. Which ADV. Okay. ADV. And Bronco's easy because the body panels literally just bolt off, <laughs> yes. right? Like the rear quarter panels. It's super easy to put body panels on those things. And the, the silver, you know, so the silver auto was our first, you know, what theme did we go with? You know, we went with Dirt King, go with the long travel setup, um, you know, bigger wheels, wider stance. Um, however, after we released it, then the questions came, you know, uh, can you go four inches, yeah, yeah. six inches? Would you start it with three? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. So we went with three and a half because we we went with Dirt King's uh, yeah. long travel. Yep. And so with the right wheel specs, offset, everything, I mean, the truck looked perfect. It, it, it is perfect. Yep. Um, even GM drove, uh, you know, came by and they're like, we we did put carbon fiber uh, bow ties, and so it disqualified us from their their awards. Oh, because you took off their logo. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And I'm like, I will grab acetone. Uh, yeah, and we will undo right that yeah. immediately. And so uh, Andrew Link, you know, who who uh, who uh, photographed for the the awards that year, he's like, that we almost got the truck. You almost picked the truck. Oh, just for the logos, you didn't. Oh no. You have to respect the bow tie and yeah. like Ford, you have to uh, you the know oval. preserve the blue oval. Yeah. The Silverado, you do have to skin the bed. And so that was a part of the reason. The other reason is you have the, the, the long bed, the six and a half, and then you have, you know, the crew cab, the five and a half. So there's so many bed variations. Yeah, there's crazy. so many uh, wheelbase Body and lines. wheel width variations. Yeah. And I'm like, for one truck, you need at least six, eight, eight molds. That's, that's overkill. Yeah. And so we did it just to see how we did. I did very well. So, yes, it, it, you know, for from a price point as well, I was like, well, it's hard to compare the apples and oranges because aesthetically they look the same. Yeah. The feeling's the same. However, Fiberworks say McNeil is off-road. Um, it's designed for the off-road. So it's just a different application. Yeah. When you say it's designed for the off-road, meaning it's thinner designed to break or it's thicker and designed to not break? Like, Or yours is for aesthetics and show like what what are the differences i i would say that mcneil and in, in fireworks you know if you look at go on their website and you look at the their product catalog it is meant for these project trucks you know kind of like the, the the drift scene you know you have panels that aren't lining up you have you know at first when they're brand new and 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 you fit it up this the first time it's going to look great it's going to look great on the truck but, but after that time. truck uh, over miles you're yeah thrashing because, and, you're, it, and you you're slotted the hole so things are moving yeah, yeah. We design ours for the intention of being on your permanent street daily vehicle. Yeah. However, the, if you modify it to go off road, yeah. it can handle the off road. Yeah. Just it 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 is structurally stronger for permanent, you know, lasting the life of the of, yeah. the, of the truck. On a drift car or on a on a on a, on a Baja truck, yeah, printer, you blow it's a almost disposable. And, yeah, you're, right? yeah, you're you're replacing those you on know, a race truck for multiple sure. Multiple times. Pre pre runner can be. That's why a lot of guys have white fenders because like I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to paint it because my fourth set. Just yeah, because I blow them off when I you know too much up travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And I got a rock in the tread or something. And you know it it also uh, reflects the, the the price points. You know you're not going to go too crazy on on the manufacturing process because you're you're making multiples of it for the same customer or for the same vehicle. So let's talk about RK Sport specifically with your your, your pieces. Is your market show trucks are they daily drivers like you just said like where's the what's the mix i would put rk sport in a category of um it's been a while since i've I've used it but oem plus you know we want to design our products to do what ford did with the f-150 raptor 
it's more than just an F-150. It's, it's, it's performing better. It's, it, uh, it, it, you know, our functional hoods do function. There are, they are functional. Um, we want customers to look at, to think that this has came off the lot, you know, as, as a, as a plus model. And you want all of the hinges and, yes. and the hood latches to work just like it would stock. You want it to have that style, but have the same function as the stock part coming off. Yes. So it, it is premium products. Yeah. So many hoods now have the air scoops and such, and they, they're they fitted with plastic that r- directs the airflow, in theory, down into the air box. So how are you handling that? Um, I'm talking about my regular 392 with the yeah. Hydro Guide? And, yeah, and the TRX and so many others. So with, with, uh, with Stellantis vehicles, um, Dodge, yep. as you can see, we don't have too many Dodge offerings. Reason is, is because in the Mopar world, they all want... Viper style, yeah. RT style, Demon style, Hellcat style yep. hoods on their Chryslers, on the, you know, whatever. Those are a dime a dozen. So if we come out with original designs, they won't purchase those because they want a Demon hood scoop. Yeah. They want but they the, want to look like the wealthier version yeah. of the one that they have. Even they have a V6. <laughs> mm, I see. And so for, from from a business standpoint, it doesn't make sense. That's weird because you'd think without knowing the industry as well as you do Mm -hmm. and seeing that firsthand, you'd think that they would want something that's unique and bespoke, but they don't. They just want to, it's like, oh, the guy that's got a BMW 3 Series and he debadges it. So you may, and then he puts on M badges or something. The M bumper. And you're like, ah, every, like all the real enthusiasts know it's not an M. That you just rebadged it, but yeah, he's but the average guy doesn't. The WRX with the STI wing, yeah, yeah, right. So yep. there's so many. Nothing drives me crazier than when guys put an AMG badge on the a Type R not, Civic. Type R Civic, like all oh, that stuff. Like, stop it, <laughs> stop that. But but so many people do. It was he, crazy. He put TRX uh, badges on his Ram. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and yeah. And the, the, and the suspension, hood and the, the suspension. And the I mean, he had done it at the factory, but right. it's still lame. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when when it comes like uh, the the HD Silverado and and the Sierras, um, well, on on one hand, we hadn't designed a new hood for those, but aesthetically, again, it it, it comes down to the overall look of the hood. Yeah. Um, what I love about what my father in law does is he sculpts everything by hand. Is it using like clay or is he rising foam? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So very. So it's old almost school. like a uh, surfboard shaper. Yes. Or or old Dex uh, shaper. So do you pull? I've got a brand new Silverado. Mm-hmm. Let's say I get a new an HD mm-hmm. twenty four. It's got a slightly different hood, right? Bring it in. Do I pull the hood off and then lay a piece of craft paper or something and then put expanding foam on top of it, or, or, or am I taking the original hood and laying it? on a couple of paint buckets and covering it with something and then re it. Like, I can't even picture how you're which is starting. Which is why you don't have this business because <laughs> you're exactly laying things it. on paint buckets. But how does it, how do you start? What you're asking is how does a professional do it? Yep. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we are using factory, you know, uh, factory panels, whether it's the fender or the hood. Let's take the hood, for instance. We take the factory hood, we take it off or we leave it on the vehicle. We're going to scuff it. We're going to, if it's um, if we're starting from scratch, we're we're grabbing a, a two piece foam, you know, A and B, mixing that that self rises, and yep. and we get the shape that we lo- that, that we like, the height, the desired height, the desired um, landscape, you know, depending on the body lines and how many bumps they have on the hood, if it dips down like the F one fifty, we bring it back up. Okay, and so it's a it's a blank canvas. So we we put the foam, we shape the foam the way we like it. Then we cover it in Bondo, then we cover it in fiberglass, and then that's what becomes our plug. From that modified, you know, uh, custom styled hood, that becomes our mold, and that's how we know we're going to get factory fitment. How the hell do you make the right and left sides the same if you're doing hand shaping? Uh, to we, me, that's like um, the most amazing thing when I've watched car designers doing clay mm-hmm. in a design studio or something, and you look and the right and left are identical. And, you know, like old school Ford Mustang or something like that, they, right and left was done by hand. Like yeah. that fender might be just a little bit different, but your eye doesn't see it or or, or does, right? Yeah. I mean, how do you guys make sure that it's a, that it's a symmetrical on each side? So much like digital, you're designing one side. Okay. 
and you're creating these we use uh like construction yeah that cut out paper yeah we custom cut it okay and so we have you know every, very old school every five to ten inches yeah. you're measuring you know okay a, a b c d e it's almost like a nascar template or something like that right when they're checking for arrow and stuff they have those templates that they line over the tops of the car bodies to make sure that it's within spec yes so when when rk sport began to design you know a lot of these you know rk sport was born from you know getting behind the scenes look at the concept drawings and the concept you know the artist sketches you know obviously the artist sketch always looks a lot better than yeah what actually comes to sure. production and so that's that's what's you know that's how rk sport was born and we continue to do that on every level is we we look at it and like we can make it better you know my father-in-law did take a lot of um he went to school he went to community college for sculpting you know clay work yeah. anything that would help him design better mm-hmm. and m- make his job easier and so everything is very very old school and when he finishes a, a, a design, I'm even more impressed when it's off the vehicle because once we place that the the prototype hood on the vehicle, I'm like, oh my god, that body line lines up with the bumper. That that lines up with the grill. That you know, you pay attention to these things because in the past, Chevy and Ford would come and visit us during the Ford vehicle, uh, the four dollar vehicles, or uh, the the GM would you know inspect the the projects along the way. Um, in preparation for SEMA. And so the designers would join, you know, the, the, you know, the head honchos walking around. They're like, Hey, make sure you pay attention to this area because this, this part of the hood pertains to this part of the bumper, the headlight. And so it's just, you know, constant reminders as he's designing that there is some type of, you know, language language. that travels through all the panels. Correct. And so when he does it just on the hood, you know, if, if uh, you know, I'll put the word out there. Hey, I need I need a 2021 F-150 for six weeks. They'll drop off the hood. They'll leave. They'll leave either leave the vehicle or leave the hood at least. And so when he and when he just has just the hood, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what he does because he hasn't, you know. He hasn't he seen may, the rest of it. Yeah, he, he may go online and look at the vehicle on Google Images, but he hasn't seen it in person. So, you know, when you design on a computer, you're looking at it and you're... You're looking at it on a 20-inch screen, so you're not seeing all the details. I'm digging the uh, the 2019 Ram 1500 DT Ram Air Hood, and what's cool about it is it sort of mixes the HD-style extraction vents with Ram Air, but then you actually have a hood uh, air path that actually goes to, I guess that goes to the air box? Yes, factory air box. So, like, that's, that's you know, going back to Lightning's point of these vehicles that have functional hood scoops, this is completely a functional... Hood scoop. Wait, th- so this confuses me because now this hood has to be constructed of multiple pieces with a hollow inside. Or are you using the under skin that stock and then your overlay on top? Or no, how does that work? It, it's a hundred percent replacement. It, wow, so it's a two piece. We have we designed the inner structure and we designed the outer structure. Oh wow! And That's so cool. we we still use the same hood. We skin the underside of the hood. Because that gives us our geometry. Wait, the, wait, the, say, wait, hold on a second. Say that again. You, you're, you're using the original hood. Yes. So there's metal still in there. There's no, no. Um, when we're designing during the design oh, process, okay. we okay. Do, we do, we do our design on top. Then we flip the hood, and so we we it's called a, a splash mold. So we lay a layer of fiberglass on the factory understructure of the hood. And that gives us the geometry of what the underside will look like. Then we do our unique design of doing the air ducting to the the intake as well as the heat extraction. And we make sure that we have clearance uh, when we close the hood. So I put it up on the screen in the pod shed. Look at the body lines for a composite hood. That's amazing. Wow. I mean, that's crazy. How How often have you had one of the OEs borrow one of your designs and and put it into production. We were like, hey, I think I we inspire that. Um, they're all uh, they're always five years behind. So so in, it's hard to tell what they ripped so off. If you look at <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the the 2014 Toyota when the new body style changed, we had the hood scoop with the heat extraction vents. So I I'm glad you brought up the Tacoma because when I flipped over to the Tacoma tab on rksport.com. I've seen these hoods all over Southern California. Mm-hmm. This hood has to be one of your most popular. Am I wrong? 
the the first hood we did for the 2016 is a molded factory hood scoop so it, it's at least functional and it's it's on there it's it's not it doesn't look like just a plastic piece that was added after the fact you okay know, like an afterthought so it's functional the second one we we released along with our wide body tacoma kit and it's popular but it's not as popular as ford so ford, oh, really? ford is our bread and butter i mean we we make more for ford f-150 hoods more than any any other uh product that we release out there yeah but holman says that f-150s aren't modified <laughs> so, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as somebody who is in the space, yep. you're telling me F-150s are one of your most modified vehicles. What's one of the fastest moving parts that you sell goes to F-150 owners? All day. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think he's lying right to walk, our face. Walk the SEMA show floor. <laughs> He doesn't have time to walk the seam no, show I, floor. I'm always working. <laughs> Super duties left and right. Yeah. F-150s left and right. Yep. And not only that, but SEMA gives away, you know, all the awards to Ford. I keep telling him that, and he just he doesn't listen to me. So, so I got to say that this right here on the uh, the homepage, arcadesport.com, 15 to 20 F-150 Ram Air Hood version 2 front splitter. Oh, just changed pages on me. Um, it, it, that is an amazing looking hood. I haven't seen anything like it before, like the ones up on the uh, the pod shed screen. Yes. So the V2 hood, a lot of people love the V1 design. They didn't want the additional vents on the side. So I'm like, okay, well, how do we reinvent the wheel? And so the V2 is is um, a wider hood scoop. It, it has a low profile. However, we lowered the the uh, the geometry of the front entrance of that hood scoop, so it it actually looks like it's raised. So it's it's oh, like an it's optical it's illusion. It's closer to the grill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, optical this illusion. Is, this yeah. is a better view of it here. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's got like that American muscle look. You know, yeah, that, totally. That's, that's definitely something you would see on like a Chevy truck. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. So we debuted that along with the lower the lowering uh, ground effects kit uh, in in Ford's booth because that was the 2018 refresh. Right. Um, we presented it as a, you know, a, a street truck, a performance truck, regular, yeah. you know, uh, in, in the proposal was like a five, 5.0 Whipple. You know, we yeah. want, that was my, my tribute to my dad and, and his previous ownerships of the, the F-150 Harley Davidson models. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I did the two tone Ford loved it. We went with it. Uh, and at the same time, I'm like, all I see are lifted trucks. Are lower trucks making a comeback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, why not? We think so. Let's do it. We think so. And the uh, the ch- the the chin splitter, we couldn't make those fast enough. I mean, that first really? year we we sold thousands of those. Wow. Um, we had at one point like three or four molds because we just had to make them every day. Holy mackerel! And the 2021 came out and that was during our transition and I had no ability to design and do R and D on that, on, on the 2021 trucks. It wasn't oh. until I got back from, uh, Austin that I was able to, Ooh, that 21 to 24 my... splitter looks nice. But yes. you were, you were like, we are missing a huge market by not being able to get this, get this out to people fast. Huge enough. market. Yeah. And at the same time, there was a, a an individual in Austin who was designing a, tw- a splitter for the 2021 trucks using our previous RK Sports splitter. Mm, of course they were. Oh, no, that's not cool. Not only that, but my former employees helped him. Uh, of course they did. And yeah, the, the you know, they Cuz they knew you had a hole. Yes. In your in your catalog. There was a need and yeah. they 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 were, went up to the challenge to fulfill the need. And my thing is like more power to you, but don't copy my homework. Yeah. yeah. So where do you go from here? What's next? You you've got the company, you've got your space, you're getting caught up, I guess, on uh, you know some of the the holes in the catalog now. Yes. And- so you know now now that I'm partnered up with my father-in-law, EG Customs, um, he is my go-to for designs and in, and in, in manufacturing and mold mold work. Um, and I'm also assisting him with, you know, RK Sport has done a lot of private label work. And so nice. that that's where I come in and, and bring clientele for both yeah, companies. Perfect. Um, and it's it's awesome. It's going back to what we used to do. Hey, that's how Truck Show Podcast, Use for Adventure, and OVR Magazine all work. They yeah. all work with each other. So it, very it, incestuous. I'm, I'm, I'm very. very, you know, now that I'm the boss and, and can make these decisions, now it's like, okay, 
you know, in, in every business, you have to work hard to replace yourself your, yeah. or, or the positions you <laughs> yeah. you know All the hats that for. you wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video and editing, photos and all that. I don't have time for it. I never, I didn't even have it when I was Funny working you should say that. I replaced sport. myself with lightning. That's <laughs> what I did. <laughs> there you go. And you with got what, Dave with, now. What, with what duty? <laughs> uh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, the, one of the big changes that, that I wanted to do immediately was um, ask for help in my, my content creation. Um, so I partnered with uh, Stuart Webb, uh, oh, Excalibur. Yeah, yep. So um, shout out to Print Digital. They have allowed me to breathe again and sleep better knowing that there's a lot of engagement going on in my social media uh, presence. Without you having to lift a finger or a thumb. Well, I still do. You yeah. know, it, it's hard to break the habit, but it, it, it is me responding as well as my, the, the, the great team at, uh, at Print Digital. However, during the, my day-to-day -day activities, I can focus on developing new product, making sure, you know, consistency, logistics, everything. And at the same time, at the end of the day, I can go on like, oh, let's see what RK Sport is up to, you know, much similar to <laughs> you, uh, you know, liking and engaging in the Truck Show podcast Yeah, now that, now that Dave is helping us yeah. with that lighting and I, are, <laughs> in fact, Dave posted something uh, a, a little while ago. And all the, uh, I think it was maybe about the Cybertruck, and everybody was kind of dogpiling on, on Lightning. And Lightning writes with his personal account, you know, Jay Tillis, he goes, it's like you don't know I can read these, yeah. right? I mean, it was hilarious. And I think people like that because normally we're so involved in just trying to get something out. We don't really have the time to interact. It's hard, man. It, it's, it, it is very it's, hard. It's a machine that cannot stop being fed. Yes. And, and sometimes you'll go to the grocery store and Mother Hubbard has nothing left on the shelf. And you're like, I just, I don't, I just can't do it today. Yeah. I, like, I want to do something for you guys. I have to go die in the corner for a few hours. <laughs> like, I just, I can't do it. So. Yeah. It, it, that was my biggest, you know, one of my biggest things that I, I needed to desperately ask help for. Because otherwise I was going to continue to be in the dark. I mean, online, everybody's like, where where have you been? You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, when I went to the SEMA show, they're like, dude, what, you're alive. Like, I haven't seen you in years. Like, you've, you've been gone. I'm like, I, I've been going through <laughs> some dark it, times. Isn't it weird, though, when you are off social media? People worry you, the worst. They literally yeah. think you're dead. gone, yeah. dead, or the business is shuttered. Yeah. I mean, you're like, no, nah, I just haven't had time to pick up my iPhone. <laughs> it, and it made it even harder when everybody in, in, in our industry and just all over the world, they're all consumers waiting months and months and years for their, their product. You know, uh, whether it's a brand new vehicle, they've waited years to receive or shocks are a backlog, tires are backlogged, everything is backlogged. And so it doesn't help if I try to engage online. I'm like, that's great now, but where's my part? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, like that was my biggest hesitation is not to open that floodgate. Yeah. You got it though. And but you, yes, you, have to. you are correct. You you And you, you have, have to be honest. You have to be honest. Correct. And and so that's that's really I you know, for the past two years I sounded like a broken record, you know, on phone calls and emails. I'm training. I'm training. I'm training. I'm training. But, but you were again. but you were telling the truth. I was. And eventually it people see the truth. Yes. Yeah. And so now that my lead times are, are are have been cut drastically and they are actually like, oh, the tracking number does work. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so uh, for example, I I love your 2009 to 2018 Ram HD Striker hood. I've I've seen it on a couple of the Diesel Brothers trucks. Yes. That's a great hook. So if I order this from you, Am I getting it painted or I'm painting it? You're painting it. I'm, okay, so I'm painting yep. it. My guys are painting it. And that is in stock or I wait how long to get it? Get, just guesstimate. Yeah, everything is still made to order. Okay. However, we, we always keep product in the molds. So it just needs to get finished. And so when, when a bonded hood is in the mold, we simply pull it off the shelf, take off uh, or uh, pop it from the mold, my crew finishes it that same day, and then the next day it gets packaged to go out the door. Oh, so as soon as you finish one, you repack the mold? Yes, we, we always relaminate and bond us a, a, oh, there's a, a replacement. There's one ready to go for the next order. Correct. Oh, interesting. Yes, when when we uh, when we get an order, we're popping the existing yeah. product and then replacing now, it. Now, do you right have to away. have multiple 
uh, molds for fast movers and things oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, the F one fifty. Yeah, splitter. The, I would splitter, imagine. Yeah. Um, and again, Ford. Yeah. Uh, the Super Duty. We the the Illuma, uh, Illuma Duty. Yep. Um, that was a no brainer because when when Ford released the you know the aluminum uh, new style, um, the Super Duty shared the same geometry. I'm yep. like, oh, if this is our best seller, we before that we had no hood for the Super Duty. Okay. And so we released the 12 to 16 and the 17 or the the 17 and, and current at the same time. They both took off like wild crazy. Yeah, they both sold just as well, even though they did not exist for almost eight years prior. Wow. Yeah. And, and so what's the what's the weight difference? Uh well, aluminum is going to be much lighter. Uh, I believe those are about ten to fifteen pounds. Our fiberglass hoods and carbon because ours, you know, we make our carbon fiber hoods for aesthetic purposes. So they're structurally the same as fiberglass other than the aesthetic finished carbon on the outside. I feel like I haven't seen a whole lot of that on your website. It, I feel like most of what is on rksport.com is fiberglass. Is that yes. not true? So I removed the carbon fiber because I didn't want to continue to backlog and then just drown myself in carbon. Um, so for the time being, I removed all uh, carbon fiber products from the website. I'm slowly rolling kind them back in. Catching back up. Yes. Yeah. Well, is fiberglass easier to produce? Oh, oh way, oh, way, way easier. easier. Okay. Yeah, not Carbon fiber is not forgiving. You know, if uh, looking at these, uh, the, you know, the soundproof panels. Yeah. If you in the pod shed here. Yes. Yeah. If you distort any of these, it's going to look off and it's going to look ugly. Yeah. You, without these straight lines. To, to lay the uh, the fabric down, yeah. if it's not dead perfect, and the way it rolls over off of a. Uh, something being concave or convex and it can change it or you get a little bunching. Oh, like, yeah. It's hand-laid carbon is no joke. It is not forgiving. And the unfortunate part is in an in in open mold as you're laying it up, you're adding layers of fiberglass on there. So if it moves, you may not even see that it moved. Until after the, po Until the you, part is popped. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. You let it cure, you pop it, and then you're like... Oh, oh I, uh, yeah, that is yeah. ugly. That's yeah. a nasty distortion. Yeah. Not only that, but you take it out in the sun and, that and it looks even worse. And that whole thing is done. It's done. There's nothing you can do to fix it. Nothing. Scrap it. The only thing we can do to oh, salvage paint it. is just convert it into a fiberglass. Oh. Yeah. So we just- Or have know. a blem. Yeah. You know, somebody would probably buy a blem that has some, but then you don't want your name on that exactly. sitting out there. Exactly. Because then they yeah. see that. The, 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 they see the Friday afternoon one, right? And they're like, oh. <laughs> well, especially on such a prominent piece yeah. of, on a vehicle. I mean, yeah. you look at a hood, that's, yeah. it's in your face. It, yeah, it's at eye, eye level or um, whatever, and it's big. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, with, with any of the blemish, and we get contacted all the time, hey, do you have any uh, throwaways? Do you have yeah. any, like, rejects? I'm like, I don't, Yeah, you know. Like, I, I put a chop saw right through the middle of it. We take it yeah, out to the desert and shoot it. <laughs> so we've had some customers uh, email us back, like, I don't know what you put in these hoods, but I could not break it. You know, there's times where I'm like, I'll, I'll send you a replacement, just cut it in half. If they don't have a sawzall, they're trying to thrash it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> like, there was a moment in, in 2019 where uh, this this YouTuber, uh, Whistling Diesel, he purchased a truck from Retro Customs. Yeah, the the the, the blue uh, F350. Yeah. The, he, the, that was the one that put him on the map. Can you guess what? The only, th the only thing that survived the hood. unharmed? Was yeah. the hood. Yeah. And so... Dude, he destroyed that truck. And what's crazy is the company bought it back. Yep. And then, then they sold it and somebody else bought it. Like, that truck is now famous and it's been destroyed. And now he's represented by Hollywood. Oh, no, he's, it's a it's an interesting story. It, it, it is. And, and I mean, when I saw the when I saw that, it was like, oh, that's our hood. And I was watching <laughs> every video. I'm like, oh, I, I want to see, yeah, I wanna I wanna see, see him destroy it. I want to see him destroy it. It never got touched. Yeah, nice. It was buried underground. He, <laughs> he took a crane to it. He did all everything to it. The hood was untouched. And then I was just uh, at, at the SEMA show. I interviewed Justin at uh, Atlanta Custom Wraps. He goes, tell you what, you come to Atlanta. I'll call Whistling Diesel. I'll call Cody. And we'll have a rematch. We'll see how strong your hoods are. <laughs> nice. I was like, "Ooh, that's a good challenge." He'll I take like it, it, but he'll take like a it. saw to it. He's not gonna, he's not gonna back down from a challenge. He's, he'll figure out a way to destroy it. Well, that's, it, it, I, I'm up to the challenge. I'd use it for like a UTV ramp to drive my my side by side in the back of a <laughs> bed of a truck or something like that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I'm brainstorming some ideas. You know, called out Whistling Diesel. <laughs> Whistling Diesel, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> um, coming after you. But yeah, that's that that's that's where I'm at right now. Is I, is uh, the next part of RK Sport is taking it on the road. 
for the longest time we we we've only focused at this uh, on the SEMA show. Yeah, um, it's evolving, it's adapting uh, in a direction that doesn't align with us anymore, uh, and a lot of companies. So we're going on the road, we're doing LST, we're doing Florida truck meet, we're doing a lot of consumer events because we're going to co-host with existing dealers in that network. I see. All right. So before we wrap up, last question for me is advice to an entrepreneur. Now you've been in it three years. Yes. You, you've been through the worst part probably. You're starting to climb out and kind of see the light a little bit and go and breathe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Guy's listening. He's like, dude, I want to do it, but I don't know how, or I don't I, I don't know if I can do it. Mm -hmm. What's your advice? I'll give the the summary of the advice that I have been given uh, throughout my career is ask a lot of questions. You know, I, I, I ask a million questions, you know, really, really remember the feeling of these, these low moments and failures. You can't, um, you can't enjoy the highs if you didn't go through the lows. Exactly. And so when, when I moved back to, to, uh, to California, that wasn't the end of the road. It, it, and nor was it the beginning. It's just, Another we chapter. just keep going another yeah. chapter. And it's so, you know, the, the, the regulations of California, I'll take that all day. Bring it on. Feels I'm good to be home, still, doesn't it? Oh, amazing. I gained all the weight back. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my advice is if you're be in it for the long run, these short-term gains, these short-term goals, uh, uh, if you, if you, if you use shortcuts for success, it's only going to be temporary. That's it right there. Yeah. That's it. I think I think that's some of the best advice that we've ever had on the show. <laughs> Certainly better than what uh, Lighting and I uh, we dole out provide that in, We don't provide that quality uh, <laughs> advice. What, and that's why we have guests. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Thank you so much for uh, coming down and, and experiencing the uh, the pod shed for the first time. The pod shed. Yeah. I love it. I, I want to call this my second home now. Thank you for making trucks look better with your hoods. RKSport.com. Thank you, Caesar. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. It's, it's a, um, always a blast to be, um, you know, in a conversation with two legends of the industry. All right, now he's uh, lying to our faces. Oh, oh, get come out. on. Goodbye. He's a long-term listener, though, so we appreciate that. <laughs> Bye, stars. All right, Holman, uh, this last Sunday, I spent about three hours loading up some events on the truckshowpodcast.com event calendar, and I think it's worth a shout. Where is that? I've got four big tires and some beadlock wheels. I've got four big tires and some beadlock wheels. I've got four big tires and some beadlock wheels. All right, if you go to truckshowpodcast.com, you'll see the events tab at the top of the site and click on that and you'll see a list. It's by date. And I went through and found some local events that might be smaller than you would have heard of. And then some big ones that you definitely have heard of. And I'm imploring you to reach out to us and give us your event. Send it to truckshowpodcast at gmail.com or lightning at truckshowpodcast.com or Holman at truckshowpodcast.com or Dave, who's watching over social media on any of our socials. And we will add it to this. And we got a lot of eyeballs coming to the site these days. So please do contribute. January 6th at the Jenkins Auto Group, they've got the Lifted Truck and Jeep Show. And that's in uh, at Jenkins Subaru of Ocala, Florida. Again, that is on January 6th. Then you got February 16th through 18th. The Modified Custom Automotive Gear presents Mobtown Showdown, the dopest show in the galaxy. <laughs> Look at the art. Are you seeing the art on this thing? They stole a bunch of like 60s alien art deco feel. It's just <laughs> it's, it's all like uh, uh, what are those B movies or whatever? Yeah, it's B movie. Yeah. And it was a Carntro spectacular. Mobtown Showdown, again, it's at the Grounds, which is a big event center in Mobile, Alabama. All right, and uh, some of the other events that you got in the calendar already, Lone Star Throwdown in February. You've got the uh, 35th annual Run to the Sun Car and Truck Show at Myrtle Square Mall, I believe, in, uh, in Florida. And then from there, you've got our buddy Jordan Mulbauer and his Florida Truck Meet. And you've got Easter Jeep Safari, you got Jeep Beach, you've got C10 Nats in Texas, Overland Expo West, on and on and on. 
The best part about all this is you can get the time, the location, and we have a, either an info, register, or ticket link directly from the website where you can find the show near you. And as Lightning said, we're always looking for great show content. So please hit us up, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll get that added to our calendar. We really want this page to be the go-to for everybody who loves trucks and off-road, slammed, lifted, all of it. Give us your info so we can drive people to the show. We can keep people coming to the website and finding out what's happening in their neck of the woods. And we don't care. Big show, small show, doesn't matter. If it's happening, we want to know about it. All right, let's go from your events to your calls on the Five Star Hotline, 657-205-6105. Oh, come on and be part of the show. Call the Five Star Hotline, 657-205-6105. It's the Five Star Hotline. Five Star Hotline. Lightning and Holman, Colby here calling again. You're probably getting tired of me calling. But anyway, I have to say an observation that I have recently noticed is how far we have come with cup holders. And I think it's very under... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Did he just say how far we've come with cup holders? I mean, there were the cup holder uh, wars of the minivans of the 90s. Mm, Let's keep playing. Coming from, you know, I'm somebody that drives a lot of 80s vehicles that don't have any cup holders you've got like things that go in the window or a homemade thing but no cup holders and then i recently acquired a 99 tahoe from my great grandmother garage door to toll life 130,000 miles i don't think the back seat's ever actually been farted in wow. uh, it's, That's it's pretty clean <laughs> huge win I, I couldn't pass it up for for what she was getting rid of it for anyway but the thing is is that the, the cup holder comes out of the dash right underneath the AC slash heater vent, which I guess is really good if you're running the air conditioning right at your drink, but it's getting kind of cold now where I live, and so now I just turn all my cold drinks hot if I have the heater on. It's (laughs) it's very inconvenient. (laughs) Anyway, appreciate your cup holders in these new trucks, guys. We we, we used to not have them. I feel like uh, we've come a long way. So uh, I had to take the uh, the Mercedes into the shop and have him look at the uh, suspension, which turned out to be nothing, and it was just all in my in my imagination. But on the way there, I put I, I don't usually use the cup holders, but it's right under the stereo, and they sit flush. And you push it in, and then it pops out. There's two of them, and they articulate. And when they when this thing articulates out, it swivels out about 180 degrees away from the dashboard, then drops a pivot down, and then a lever up, and then another one. Then your sideways. wife's knee hits it and breaks it right out of the dash. No, it, they're delicate. Don't get me wrong; they're freaking delicate, and it scares me. If I if I, if it breaks, I'm hosed in the out position. It all go crazy. But there have to be. 18 parts, 18 moving parts to this silly little thing. Well, and Germans never had cup holders till the American market forced them to have it. Is that true? It's true. Yeah, they never had cup holders in the in uh, Europe um, because it's uh, people don't drive long enough, I guess, to eat in their car, and they also think you should be driving, not shoving something in your face. And the U.S. consumer market demanded it, and they had to retrofit a bunch of their dashes and stuff with you know mid-cycle refreshes and shove it a cup holder lo- there. It kind of looks like it because it's basically a cassette. Right, that slides into right, the where center. the ashtray used to be. Yeah, so it's it, so no, I, no, I still have an ashtray. It's above that, but this is it is maybe three quarters of an inch tall, maybe half an inch. It is so slender. You just tap it and it slides out. But it is an absolute feat of engineering. Wait till you get some dry Dr Pepper on that sucker. No, <laughs> no, not, not going to work for you. No, and it's it's just they're feeble. Like I wouldn't, I don't put anything. It, it'll never hold like a super tanker from you know Seven Eleven or AMP. So speaking of that, I will tell you my favorite cup holders are the ones in uh, Jeeps and Rams. I think they've got it figured out. The best thing is they have the little football, the little yes. air-filled fo- uh, football shapes. I used it on the way here to hold this drink yep. right here. And they fit all mm. size drinks and cups, and uh-huh. they don't push in enough. There's no mechanical thing to get all boogered up by, like, dried cola syrup or whatever. And they just work. They're easy to wipe out. They hold your cups. They don't break styrofoam cups if you put them in there. And they seem to work great. And because they're kind of like that that rubberized coating in there, Yetis and things like that, or your hydro flasks, your thin ones that fit in a cup holder, uh, they don't rattle around. So, uh, and it holds everything. I think those are probably the simplest and best cup holders on the market. You know what I like too? We all have door pockets where you throw like they used to call them map pockets yeah, back not, in the not day. Anymore. No, because no one uses maps, but you still have that pocket on your door. 
in my truck, in, my, in the TRX, there's a foam insert with a skinny holder for like a Red Bull can and then a little larger hole for a regular, you know, size like Dr. Pepper or something. That's freaking brilliant. I, don't, I haven't seen another truck that has those foam, foam inserts before. Yeah, have, but have you? Yeah, but it's there are like, another. There's another truck with foam inserts. Oh, I'm sure there is. I mean, I've driven so many trucks. I don't know which ones have foam inserts in the door panel or not. But you put your water bottle there. It makes sense. It's right. not. It doesn't make sense for your your soda cup from your fast food. No, place. no, no. It's something that you're going to no, store. It's, there. it's like, something with a lid. So yeah, I always put like a spare monster. You know, there you in go. there, and just in case I need it. That's right. Morning, boys. Kevin from uh, Texas. Uh, just pulled through Waterburger. Had myself. Up. Honey butter chicken. Uh, did he just say he pulled through Whataburger? He and he's sure from Texas? Did. Yep. Uh, I just got in a fight online today uh, on Facebook because my friend Tim Jackson hit me up, and he is a Texan. And let me just uh, pull this up because I want you to understand. Was he my trying position. to defend Whataburger? So if, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Travis Bunch, had posted this meme. One guy was like, Yeah, but. You ever had an In-N-Out burger animal style? And the guy who next to him says, yo, B, you better get out of my face with that BS, right? So then that started the whole thing. To stir the pot, because Tim knows how I am with In-N-Out, says paging at Sean P. Holman. Draws me into the conversation. <laughs> paging. So this is where so I was like, <laughs> paging Sean Holman, so, paging Sean Holman. <laughs> boom, I jump in with a picture of my dinner. Did you actually went there today? <laughs> yep. Uh, Tim Jackson, I'll let the lines around In-N-Out speak for themselves. In-N-Out is like the sushi of burgers. There isn't anything special about the parts and pieces individually, but when put all together, especially animal style, the magic ensues. It's the perfect amount of fresh everything. It's clean, balanced, and the prices are actually affordable and cheaper than most fast food places. It cannot be beat. It's deliciousness without the gut bomb. I'm like, yeah! And I, wow. I hit you, send. Wait, wait, you wrote all that? I wrote all that. How and then, long did it take you to compile it? Two that? minutes. And then his wife, Georgia, jumps in and, and she says, at Sean P. Holman, why do those burger packs look drier than Texas in a drought? No amount of salad dressing can fix a dry burger. And I'm like, oh! Oh, oh it's war! Dude, dude. Oh, she's dude. so wrong, by the way. Dude, check this out. It hurts how wrong she is. Yeah, here, check this out, dude. I, I won. I won oh, the hold internet. on. Wait, wait, wait. So you dropped a nuclear bomb this time. I said, at Georgia Jackson, nothing Nothing dry about them. Texans have no idea what a burger is. Y'all been deceived by what what a burger's been feeding you. Hell, the fact that they don't know is in their name. Hashtag what's a burger. <laughs> Boom! Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> double, double, right, right in your face. And then uh, a bunch of people jumped in behind, and uh, Travis was starting to poke at me, and he's all nothing dry and crispy about them fries, though. And I said, wrong again, muchacho. They're cut fresh, not frozen. Pro tip, order them well done and the crispiness issue is solved. He writes, why can't they just cook them properly without me telling them how to do their job? So I wrote, <laughs> choice, my friend, <laughs> choice. So anyway, I, a bunch of people, uh, me and a bunch of friends from Texas, this this post got out of control. So sorry to hijack the uh, the caller here, but dude, I mean, stop going to Whataburger. It sucks. Okay, I forgot what Kevin started his... Well, he just literally started by saying he pulled through Whataburger. <laughs> and I'm, I'm asking him, well, you have one out there. Why would you do that? Morning, boys. Kevin from uh, Texas. Uh, just pulled through Whataburger. Had myself a honey butter chicken biscuit. You know, that's something that old In-N-Out doesn't do. But I've expressed that I enjoy In-N-Out as well. But that's not why I called this morning to... Okay, well, that's fair. I, I, I will give him his... Honey, chicken, butter, biscuit that In-N-Out doesn't have. Fine. That's There's your one reason you're allowed to go to Whataburger. Doesn't sound like reason enough to me, but <laughs> whatever. I called to talk about this AEV conversion, uh, this Sierra Grande that Sean put up on the Instagram the other day. Let me tell you what, Sean, this is what we want. We want GM to start, stop, uh, you know, competing with the likes of Ford and Ram and go back to the style of the 70s and 80s that really that we grew up with. Those styles, these new trucks have all the capability in the world, but they don't have any soul. They don't have any style. GM needs to dig deep, go back into the archives, pull out those trucks that solidified us Chevy owners and GM owners and why we really enjoy the brand. Mix that with the new capability of today, and I swear to you, boys, you couldn't sell enough of those things. That Sierra Grande is exactly what we want from GM and every pickup that rolls out. It, it's amazing. I don't know, Sean, maybe you can call somebody and share this, but I think that this is what we want. We are tired 
of GM trying to act like Ford and Ram. Do it different. Go back to your roots, boys. That's what made you successful. Have a fine day. Five star. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That uh, Sierra Grande is pretty sweet. GMHD on 40s with the tray bed. Ooh, love it. Jay, <clears throat> it's Jordan. Listen, man, enough. Enough is enough. When it comes to Sean CRV, you can't say because you used to have a little PT Cruiser. Also, Sean loaned you the money to buy half the trucks that you now own. Also, he probably hooked you up with that Dodge you got right there. So any street cred you get when it comes to the truck game, Sean gave it to you. So, hush up. <laughs> Sean also has a badass 3 whatever Jeep. It's still cool. <laughs> Sean's the man. Jay, take a back seat. Chill. Love you, guys. <laughs> That's my boy Jordan right I there. I don't understand what he means. I mean, I, I, I've you never, never had a PT Cruiser. No, it was a Mini. Not. That was ridiculous. And I didn't loan you money to buy half the trucks you uh, own. I gave you the 100% of the money to buy the one that you no longer own. And yeah, I did help get you way, wait, wait, you way gave, hooked up wait, on the wait, TRX. Wait, you gave me 100% of the money I no longer own? What? I gave you the dollar that bought the oh, truck. Oh, oh, the dollar. Yeah, fine. Okay, sure, I'll give you that all day long. Anyway, Jay, take a back seat. Hey, Lightning and Holman. Uh, I'm calling because I'm driving uh, Holman's favorite car right now. That is a 2007 Chevy Impala. I know. A 2000 Chevy, what did he say, Impala? Impala? Definitely not my favorite car, but 2000 Chevy. Keep, keep on going there. Okay. Yep. Super exciting, super fun. Is it Impala or Impala? Because it's all different. People say it different ways. It's Impala. That's the most exciting thing about that version of that car is whether you pronounce the name one way or the other. I bet it's that goldish beige color, too. Call us back and let us know what color I, I, in my mind's driving. eye, it's that just that boring ass beige color that your grandpa had. And what color interior is it? The same that tan? No, it's the to- yeah the taupe like yeah. that. Not quite gray, not quite brown. That's the worst interior color ever. Go, go yeah. Chevy cars. And they're just the the leather's always super cracked. Oh, there's no leather. So, this is mouse fur. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. dear God, no, dude. Why am I driving a 2007 Chevy Impala? Well, I have a 1993 Chevy Z1500, and it is in the process getting a new engine, a roller cam 350 swap going into it. So I'm stuck driving this Impala back and forth to work. And uh, while it is boring, and uh, while Holman loves to hate on that because of his past years in the police, uh, it does get excellent gas mileage. I will say that. I average 30, 30 miles a gallon. So that's pretty cool. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. We appreciate the call. Don't get me wrong. 657-205-6105. It's the five-star hotline. Five-star. 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 Hotline. But please do hit up Amazon and buy a new Bluetooth uh, dongle. Because like, is that what you think it is? That's, he needs a new I, or he's Bluetooth using a dongle, or it's a Motorola flip phone. Nah, it's all it's or all it's, it's, it's all a good. Listen, all I gotta say about that uh, that that year range of the uh, Chevy Impala is that it is basically more vanilla than my refrigerator in my uh, in my fancy kitchen. That's that thing has more style and more interest. I, a Honda Accord base model DX. <laughs> that that your your grandma great aunt had that your great aunt's like girlfriend who used to come over and play bridge with her had before she passed away uh-huh. and then gave it to you it has more style so you're than saying that, that your the wallpaper and your restroom is far more interesting to look at especially down low hey Holman hi lightning because that's the way it should be um, this- next call All right lightning and Holman. Colby calling in. No, 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 no. no. Go, what, what, what? No, what? Go, finish the call. I really have to go back to it. And we'll, we already had Colby on this one, so you can't go back to the same well once or twice. Just hey, once. Hey, Holman. Hey, Lightning. This is Calvin. I was the one that was, for some reason, going to listen to every episode of the podcast over again, starting from episode one all the way up to whatever number we're on now. I think I'm somewhere in the 200s. I honestly got lost. Um, yeah, it, everything is just... It's all, it's on the lost. So <laughs> I was talking to somebody. He sounds defeated. And, uh, <laughs> he tried to go back to listen to us again. He's like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what day it is. I, I imagine like a bus dropped him off in a strange city and he has one shoe and his clothes are like two sizes too big because there's somebody else's and they're all yeah. disheveled. Uh, he's got a, I think it's a 16 or a 17, 2500 Duramax. 
and he was having issues with it. And so now he started talking about deleting it. And I'm like, ah, dude, don't, don't delete it. Just like, you know, find a, a bank's product that you can just do a little bit of a regen with because it keeps going into regen mode and, and they'll clear the code and then it'll go back into regen mode because it's not regening. It just says regen mode. He doesn't really know what's up with it. It's a relatively new truck. He's going to try the warranty and if that doesn't go to anything, then he's just going to delete it. Uh, he's had a few that have been deleted. So I keep trying to convince him otherwise and to buy a, uh, buy a bunch of bank stuff. I've sent him the website. I've said, Hey, let me know. I know somebody that can get you a discount code, possibly alleged, allegedly. I've tried to get him to listen to the podcast and he said he's not really a podcaster. So he must obviously be uncultured if he's not going to listen to you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Just thought it was an interesting thing that I didn't, didn't think that deleting was as prevalent as I guess I knew it was prevalent. I just didn't think that it was going to be something he would go to, especially because he knows the EPA is coming after stuff and he's bought stuff from a lot of different companies that no longer exist uh, due to the EPA. So anyhow, that's all I've got. Keep up the great work. Uh, at least I hope it's great work. I haven't listened to the more recent episode. <laughs> but, Boy, she can be disappointed. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be listening to all the podcasts. Uh, it's just good to know how much suckage there really is. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Can I just say something really quick to Lower the anybody who is going to take on the task of going back to episode one and going through? If you're that bored and you have that much time on your hands, do your boys, Holman and Lightning, a solid. Leave us a, a good review? No. Oh. Could you write episode notes for us so we know <laughs> what, what happened in the past and we could add those to old episodes and yeah. things like that? Because that would, that would really help us out. And uh, we never did it from the beginning. And then we were going to, and then we had too many behind us. And then we realized, oh, this is going to be a monumental task. And then we realized that our episodes were like four hours long. And then we just, it just didn't happen. So if you want to do something like that and you want to shoot us some show notes with things that happen at certain timestamps, we're not going to say no. We're going to really appreciate you for doing that. Uh, and we might even send you a Truck Show podcast sticker and uh, Lightning's Firstborn. So my oldest, he's 21 now. That means he's good for work. <laughs> <laughs> so Calvin uh, you bring up uh, the 16 or 17 Duramax 2500 HD man just when I think that the EPA is scaring a lot of guys off it, it's just they're just not and there are I, I, I'll bet you there's 100 guys a day that delete their trucks at least 100 a day all across the country and a lot of states like California where they where they, someone's going to get popped and bad things are going to happen they don't care and, uh, you know, I, I was talking to a guy at PPEI earlier today and we're just, we're just talking tunes and stuff and shooting the, uh, the proverbial shiznit. And he starts telling me my own theory. He says, you know what, you know what, Jay, I, I think that this all started back in the, uh, 08, 09 when the, uh, the OEs weren't really prepared for after treatment systems, but the laws changed and they just had to basically throw all this stuff on them and they were all having problems. So we got like a decade of guys that had problems with all their LMMs and LMLs in the Duramax world and they hated these things so much. And when EFI Live came along and they could delete everything and take all that emissions equipment, they took that right on through with them to the next generation of trucks and then the next generation of trucks. And here they are still trying to delete. So they're looking for every excuse to hate this stuff, even though it doesn't break like it used to. And it was interesting hearing that was that's my theory. And he was giving that back to me and we had never chatted before. I think that's all how it happened. Like back when this after treatment stuff started getting bolted on engines and it was just causing problems. Yeah. And, uh, and it just gave millions of American men heartache. And so let me ask you this. Yeah. How would Banks Products help his friend? So they, in this particular case, they wouldn't. So in this particular case, I'll bet you if he is actually in regen a lot, the 16s and the 17 Duramaxes, well, it's probably a 17 in my opinion. And here's why. 
and I don't know this, I, I'd like to do some more research, but if it's a 17, that's the first year of the Duramax L5P, and there were boost tube issues. On the cold side, which is on the, on the passenger side, there's a plastic fitting that goes into the throttle body. The heat cycles, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, it dries and it cracks, and you can have a tiny little pinhole leak. And if any boost is leaking out, your truck will run very rich and it won't be reported as any trouble codes. It, no codes, so you won't know what's happening, but you'll be running rich. What happens when you run rich? You create a lot of soot, and that soot is what you call rolling coal, and that gets captured in the DPF, the diesel particulate filter, and it fills up really fast. And then it regens, which is a form of like, it basically shoots fuel in there, it heats it up, it turns into ash, just the way that your charcoal briquettes in your in your barbecue get turned to ash and they float off into the air, the same thing happens. It turns it to ash and it blows that out the backside of the exhaust pipe and it doesn't really hurt anyone. If it happens over and over and over again, that's bad. You're using a ton of extra fuel. Your truck's getting poor economy. It's Everything about that is bad, but it could be caused by something as simple as a boost leak. And in that particular truck, it's super common. So the hot tip before he spends like $4,500 on a delete, which is removing all that emissions equipment illegally, have him go down to his local diesel mechanic and do a boost check to see if he's getting a full like 34 PSI. If not, then you found your culprit. Thank you, Dr. Lightning. Mm -hmm. We appreciate your uh, your fine uh, analysis of this particular Duramax, and uh, I'm glad we could help uh, Calvin and his anonymous friend out. I'm not a mechanic. I just play one on a podcast. 657-205-6105 is the five-star hotline. It's available 24 hours a day. If you're an over-the-road trucker, leave us a message in the middle of the night. Those are the best. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. Oh, oh. You can also reach us at our email, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com, holman at truckshowpodcast.com, or lightning at truckshowpodcast.com. And, of course, you can follow us or... Uh, link to us or tag us do all those things on social at truck show podcast <laughs> i, I did it again ah, so close at, at it's because it's, it's because we're so close to the uh, christmas uh all right so here we go <laughs> what does that Trent, have to do uh, with well, anything? explain it in a minute we're getting we're getting it's like I've, I've got the the shakes all right uh at truck show podcast at lbc lighting at sean b holman hit us up on social uh dave graham's been killing it you guys have been interacting with it Please do us a favor. Whee! Tag us in things you think we need to see or talk about on the show. Dave will make sure that we see those things. Uh, tag your favorite episode. Uh, link back to Spotify or Apple or, or wherever you uh, listen to your podcast. And let's keep this community thing going. We want to do a bunch of things uh, in 2024 with you, uh, including maybe having some uh, online meetups and uh, interacting with you guys and, and things like that. So love you guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is the last show of the year and we are going to give everybody including you including us the world's best christmas present wait 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 wait. what 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 is this something i don't know about yes we're going to give our listeners a present and we're gonna give ourselves a present can we afford it yes because we are going to take a week off and that way their ears don't have to hear us for one last uh, show and uh, our next show our next drop will be uh, january 8th uh, so we're giving ourselves a break. We're giving you a break. But of course, you can. Uh, we got plenty of content you can catch up on. And uh, again, please, uh, please share the podcast. We appreciate all of you guys. Have a really merry Christmas. And, and not to leave on a sour note, but I just wanted to uh, toss out my uh, my condolences to uh, our friend of the show, Jason Engelman from uh, Bill Stein. You'll remember that he was on the show uh, talking about the TRX shocks and how they worked. He eventually went to uh, Terraflex. Uh, Jason recently passed away from cancer. And uh, he was a big fan of the show, a, a big supporter, proponent of what we were doing, uh, loved what we were up to, and, and really enjoyed his time when he came on that interview and, and uh, talked trash on the uh, competitors. Uh, that interview, by the way, is one of those one that of the really best. made an impact. It kind of changed the way we do interviews. Before that, we, we were kind of afraid to get into details, like technical details. But you guys love it. And, and Jason really dug in yeah. and kind of pulled the curtain back on shock tuning. And he was not afraid to compare Bill Stein to other brands. It no. was really an it, it's eye-opening a great, yeah. interview. Yeah. It's a great uh, it's a great interview. I'm, I'm glad that his voice and, and he lives on a little bit in the podcast. And uh, just uh, a bummer. I'm going to miss him. Rest in peace, Big Mama. We uh, we're going to miss you on this side of uh, on this side of the world. So anyway, uh, just a, a little little thank you to my friend Jason. We're going to miss him. And uh, again, want to let you guys know that we're coming in hot for 24. Again, I want to remind you, 
We are doing two episodes a week. We do one long form, one short form. Well, that's and, until we aren't. Until we aren't, yeah. <laughs> and that's going to start with uh, the January 8th drop. So uh, it's going to be so much editing. No, it's going to be awesome. Oh, we're, we, we are going to kill it. You know, 2024 it's us, right? is the, it's still the us. year of TSP. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's us. There's the year of the rat, the year of the gopher, mm-hmm. the year of the chicken, yeah. all those things where this is the year of the truck show podcast. You can hear it sucking. In advance. No, no, no. We are going to push the suckage aside. Okay. And we're going to give you more and better quality content, at least as good as we can produce. You must be out of your mind. I mean, we're going to try. On behalf of Holman, this is Lightning saying, please have a very Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays to you. And uh, I hope you all get everything you want. As I told my, uh, my daughter, Abby... Uh, and what she told Santa Claus was, uh, when my dad gets coal, he's using it for his smoker. So I have her told her that getting coal is not a bad thing when you're an adult. <laughs> getting coal? <laughs> yeah, because I can use it in my smoker. It's going to be perfect. Make barbecue out of it. But if you so, ha- so if you're on Santa's naughty list and you yeah, get coal, you're just going to barbecue. You're turning lemons into lemonade. Yeah, you're turning a- coal into barbecue and into yeah. steak. And if you didn't get what you want for Christmas. Then treat yourself. If Santa didn't drop off a new Nissan Frontier in your driveway like he did with me, then you want to head on down to your local Nissan dealer where you can check out the Nissan Frontier, the Nissan Titan, the Nissan Titan XD, the industry's best warranty, five-year, 100,000 miles on the Titans, and, of course, the Frontier, hot-selling midsize pickup. Great little truck, great-looking, dependable, reliable, great fuel economy. Pleasure to drive. You want to have it on your list if you are looking for something affordable to put in your driveway. NissanUSA.com, where you can build and price your Nissan pickup truck today. All right, so check this out. If um, if you get hosed and your significant other or your son or your daughter doesn't get you the Banks High Dash that you've been so dreaming of, um, hit up Santa Lightning at LBC Lightning on the Gram or Lightning at TruckShowPodcast.com and I got you. I, I got you. I got a little discount. You know what I'm saying for, for, for some TSP listeners? I got you. I got you. I got you. All right, Lightning, I think that's uh, the end of the show, and I am ready to go on my Christmas vacation, so I'm ready nice. to head out. All right. Well, in the uh, Christmas spirit of giving, I've got a present for all y'all. Here we go. Biscuits. Christmas no, biscuits. Wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. It's Christmas time. Santa Claus is on his way. He's loaded, get his on the sleigh. Let's drop him off on Christmas Day and I say, ha ha! Folks will gather around the fire and sing songs like a choir by the tree the whole time and I say, ha ha! Baby Jesus wrapped in cloth is in a manger with frankincense and was me like you did him because it's Jesus Because it's Christmas time and that's the time in which we all get together and hold hands and sing some and